University of Chicago Maroons. The Maroons, Logan coming in at 2-0, and beating Washington St. Louis 31-21 in a tough game. And last week, kind of taking it to IC, 66-14 uh, to there, Logan. What do you see out of the Maroons this week? Um, I see another high-scoring um, offensive showing for them because uh, Illinois College is another Midwest Conference team, mm -hmm. much like we are as they are. Um, and I'm, I'm not seeing much out of the Beloit defense to uh, – to get some to string some stops together. Logan, you hit it right on the head. The Beloit defense has been a bit lackluster this year, but they have been pr primed to look to make a bust out with Lens Bernadell on that defense line. But before we jump into the defense line and the defense, indeed, we get to the Buccaneers who come to this game at 0-2. Logan, their first game was super tough, playing at home, losing in not so good fashion. But last week they had a better game, losing 38-7 to against the Cornell Rams. It was 7-3 to three for the most of that first quarter, and about after halftime, they kind of took a digger. Logan, what are your keys for the Bucks here to stay in this game? Um, well, it's going to be defense. You know, defense wins championships, says Ray Lewis. Scott Van Pelt says special teams win championships there, Logan. Well, they make plays. Th special teams, you know, don't let them go uh, unnoticed. The, the field position really is a big battle. Um because, you know, if you get a good a good or bad punt or good or bad return, you know, that's a difference of it could be 10, 15, 20 yards. And in the special teams area, we do succeed there having a punter, Alonzo Castilla, as Alonzo's had an average punt this year, about 35 yards, which doesn't seem like a lot in context, but kicking it from the 50, pinning him inside the 20, has been huge for the Buccaneers. Logan, for the Buccaneers to win, what are some key players standing on the offensive side that will need to succeed in order to secure that victory? Uh, well, it starts with your quarterback. Jacob Schaefer. Yeah, it starts with the quarterback, Jacob Schaefer, managing the offense, managing the offensive line, getting his guys in order. And then you need playmakers. You need playmakers on the outside. Um, I know Nano Reyes, a big running back for us, and A.J. Fitzpatrick are going to have to make some plays, I think, as well. A.J. Fitzpatrick, the legacy player, his father played football here as well. Ah. Can you guess, Logan, a little trivia there for our Buccaneers fans today. What position did his father play? Well, AJ's a wide receiver, so I'm going to guess his dad was a lineman. You are correct. Can you tell me which it. position on the line? He was a – he was the center. He was indeed the center. He Logan, the already center. getting that trivia out there for our Buccaneers faithful. AJ Fitzpatrick, not as – tall but definitely as strong as his father has been the catalyst for this Buccaneers offense. Look for them to try and get it to him a lot and look for him to get it often. Logan, something I've been disappointed in this year has been the Buccaneers offensive attack and not putting in Nano Reyes. Nano Reyes is the leading rusher from two years ago. If you're coach Ted Sokinson, what is your game plan to get Nano the ball? More runs? Are you passing? Are you running? What are you doing, Logan? Well, I spoke to him in an article for the round table. Interesting. And he said he'd like to be a 50-50 player, gaining 50 rushing yards, 50 receiving yards on any given game. Because that, that gives them a chance to be diverse on the offensive and swing it out. But he is a he he looks like a short a short yardage back to me. He's a big body. He's a, a big body. Logan, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I would see him as more of a Peyton Hillis type running back. Yeah. A Peyton Hillis or maybe even a Mike Tolbert to give some shine to yeah. my old fullbacks back in the day, but that's how they've been using him this year. If we got three yards to go, he's getting it. And if, if he's got good hands, like that 50-50 says, give him a swing, a swing route out of the backfield as a dump off last resort. He is indeed a tough man to bring down. And going back to the freshman quarterback, Jacob Schaefer, I think, you know, taking the keys out of the ignition for a second and looking at this Bucks team as a car, Jacob Schaefer holds the keys. And if he's not completing passes early and not making his checkdowns, this is going to be a long day for this Buccaneers team as this Chicago team is ruthless, killing us 66-14 to 14 two years ago. But this Bucks team is much improved, as we talked about two weeks ago on the broadcast with Matt Laszlo. The energy for the Bucks team is up this year. Logan, any standouts there for the Chicago team as, you're, as they take the field? Um, well, looking at stats, it's uh, number 11. They're running back Nick D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose coming in only He's at got, what, like 250 yards on the year? He does. And coming in only at 5'9", but at 185, he packs a punch. Some would say he's super similar to our running back in uh, Silas Say. Silas Say only 5'7", but coming in at 170. Two similar backs we'll see in today's action, Logan. They got a good-looking quarterback, too. He looks like a quarterback. That's a solid thing to talk about is the look, the appeal. Yeah. Is when 
Daniel Jones comes out on the field on Sunday nights for those Giants or Thursday night this week, he doesn't really look like a quarterback. He doesn't fit the bill. He looks insecure. When this Chicago team takes the field, Philip Martini, the 6'3", 200 senior, comes out and takes the field with poise, leading this Maroons team. Yes, it makes me wonder how many years he started for this for this squad because he looks experienced. He does look experienced. As the Buccaneers take the field, I believe – with it is a type of turnover chain there. It's a sword. It it's looks a sword because like. we're the Buccaneers. We are the Buccaneers, indeed. We are Logan. In a battle, of, in a battle of a maroon and a buccaneer. I think I'm taking a buccaneer. Well, what is a maroon? That was my question, indeed. It's a color. I know that. I, I'm indeed in intrigued. That is a color as well. Is it like the Browns then? It can't be. Oh, interesting. I mean, it's just a color. University of Chicago is super historic. One of their first head coaches being the original Stag. You know the Stag Bowl, Division Three Championship. Uh -huh. He went there. Mr. Stagg went there. Their field wow. named after him. A little fun facts trivia as the captains are getting ready. That was fun. But, Logan, Floyd coming in these blue jerseys, you have to say, they are pretty uh, dashing. They do look good. They do look indeed good. As we have a little uh, TV show airs on Charter 992, a little plug here, Floyd in action, where we talk about each game. And, Logan, what was your prediction for the game this week? It was you, Chicago. I can't remember if I had a score. I believe you did have a score. I can't remember what it was. It, uh, I think it was three three scores at least. I think it, it was as well. I think it was U Chicago by three scores. I am a Buc Boy Buccaneers faithful, but I will go U Chicago 28-14. Look I'm looking for that Buccaneers defense to step out. I'm super impressed, as I already talked about, with Lenz Bernadelle, but also with our defensive backs. As coming out for the captain is uh, – Number 27, number 27 being Dallas McKinney. McKinney is a superb player on this Bucs defense. Look for him to be making plays. That's something I'm excited to see. And as well as Dallas McKinney is number 33, Josh Shapiro. Shapiro, the 5'11 senior, coming in at 165, has lead the ten, led the team in tackles. Shapiro can go in coverage. Shapiro can rush the passer. He's a linebacker that if you're watching this game today, you're going to need to look out for. And on the other side, for the University of Chicago Maroons, a little Will Ferrell action. I just love saying Maroon, Maroon. Will uh, Skronsky is leading the team right now with, it uh, looks like, 16 tackles. 16 assisted, uh, 6 tackles, 22 total correction there. First mistake, probably our last year, as we're ready for this action, as the clock kicks down to about 5 minutes. Logan, being a Beloit College student, and with all the sports performing better and well, what does it mean to be here and broadcast this game and show our college off? There's a lot of pride in it. I, I like probably think about twice a day how proud I am to be a Buck. That honestly sounds like an overestimate, but me too, being around campus and seeing all that we've accomplished as a school yes. and making it through the COVID. There's so, there is so much energy with every team. And th I want a lot of it, I think, is because of last year's cancellation seasons. We'll be right back as the National Anthem plays. Logan, we're back here on the air, getting ready for this Beloit College Buccaneers matchup versus the University of Chicago Maroons. And to quote one of my favorite philosophers, Aubrey Graham, otherwise known as Drake, what a time to be alive. You and yours versus me and mine. How you like that energy coming I in here, Logan? I love a good Drake reference. How can you not? As Logan, the soccer team just won. It looked like 2-0 over Nebraska Westland. 
Solid game again by Audrey Ketter, not giving up any goals. And another solid game by backup goalie Bri Ortega, also not giving up any goals, it looked like. And it looks like to start the game, the Buccaneers getting over to the football action are going to be kicking off to these Maroons. Back deep for the Maroons. Looks like number 20, 82, it looks like. Logan got a number of that, 82. 82. Gabe Solis, the 5'11", 165 junior. Tell you what, the kickoff can be the most exciting play in football. It's honestly, being those Friday Night Lights, you know, talk about our playing days, being former players, being like Deion Sanders right now, the best part about the game is that first hit. Because once you get that first hit oh. out of the way. You like, you didn't want it to happen, but you're like, I want to get hit to get the nerves out. And we were talking about before, Logan, you didn't take many hits at Bigfoot High School there. Your jersey was clean a lot. Well, I wouldn't say a lot, but I'd say my boys did good up front for me. They did. I Just a shout-out to Bigfoot High School. And how they do last night against Adam Stredship there? For the, uh, they lost, I believe it was 14-22. to 22. Not bad. One score, yeah. One score. And it looks like Rafael Cervantes is out there, the freshman from Texas. James Madison High School is going to be leading the Buccaneers with this charge here. Great song choice in the air with the thunder playing in the background. A solid crowd of over about a thousand people here today. As the Buccaneers get ready, the ball falls over. Logan, that might be one of my biggest pet peeves in football. It's annoying. And then when one of the players has to hold it. Yeah, I always wondered how they decided that. Is it your we weakest tackler or? Well, I think it's your fastest. But oh. then I think it's, uh, but then I think it's actually your safety guy, because mm -hmm. you know you always have a safety guy last effort. I think that's him. So your strongest tackler. Yes, your 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 sure, bona fide open field tackler. Your sure tackler. The cannons are ready. The sail is set. As Rafael Cervantes kicks off, it's time for Buccaneer football. Taking the kickoff is number 17, Olson. Olson bounces off that right side. Ooh. A missed tackle by a Buccaneer. But the Bucks swarm back right there in the tackle is number 48, 48 being. A player on the Bucks team, Logan, as it looks like they take it at the 19 yard line. After missed tackles, the Bucks swarm back to make a great play. Looked like that was Mark Flores that made the initial hit. 57, I believe. I appreciate that initial hit. As Philip Martel Martini is back there to take the first snap. Olsen split out left, two receivers to his right, tight end on the right side of the line. Martini from the shotgun, the snap, a little inside handoff. Up the middle, shakes and bakes for about five yards. There's the Ambrose right away that we talked about. Looks like it's gonna be about second and four for the Maroons. As Martini still in the shotgun, two wide out split out left, one to the left. I like this formation here, Logan, with that tight end right behind that right tackle. Mm -hmm. so Martini see how they use them. Martini, play action pass over to Olsen. Olsen catches it. And is swarmed by a ship of Buccaneers, but that's a quick first down for the Maroons. That's not something you want to see if you're the Beloit Buccaneer faithful, Logan. No, no, not right off the bat. They, they'll settle in. They'll settle in. You know, like we talk about, that first hit. Everyone's, everyone's getting their first hit this possession. Uh, in uh, coverage was... Number nine, Gavin Thorpe. Thorpe, a big uh, player for the Buccaneers two weeks ago, being targeted and came together. As they go two wide outs, split to the right, tight end on the, two tight ends on the left side. Martini from the gun. Takes a snap. Little play action pass. Martini looking deep. He chucks it deep. He's got a man oh, wide, wide open. open. Logan. You got to make that throw. There's no worse feeling as a quarterback than overthrowing that. Throw that. Wide open, right down the seam. Put too much air under it. Probably about, what, three yards too long? It might have been even two yards. You he was more wide open than a library on a 12 o'clock at Beloit College. <laughs> you got to make that throw. He's got to make that play. As we have second and ten. As and at the same time, what happened on that coverage? The Buccaneers play pr primarily man. man. As second and ten looks about the 39-yard, uh, the 41 of the Maroons. Martini, shotgun, two receivers to the right, takes a snap. A little inside handoff. And tailback, number 11, Nick Ambrose, who we talked about before, being a big part of this Maroons offense. Scampers for about five yards, making it a manageable third and five. Need well, a good, nice stop here. <laughs> Logan, there's uh, nothing to get off the field. Defense needs to get off the field, get a, good, get a good stop here. Nothing easier for a quarterback than doing a little handoff. Sets the oh, this is the best. Settles down. Sometimes after a scramble. 
the next play, regardless of what it is, you're going to hand it off if you're tired. As Martini in the gun, two receivers is right, a tight end in the right tackle, one out to the left, takes a snap. Looks back, looks for his receiver, a little quick, a little curl there, he fumbles oh, it. And we'll see what happens. A little scramble, a little dog pile, but it looks like the receiver got it back. Oh. oh. If I had the challenge flag, Logan, I would throw it there. What Talk do you say? Talk about luck. Questionable catch and fumble. Good uh, good close out there by the corner, number nine. Uh, that's Gavin Thorpe there. It looks like uh, on the reception is number 17, Zach Olsen. Olsen caught it and looked to do a little shimmy, but fumbled it while he was shimmying. Fumbled, it, fumbled it forward and got the first down on the recovery. Well, that's a tough break. That's tough a tough break. break. First and 10 from the 50-yard line, Martini. Play action to Ambrose. He's looking deep. He's got Olsen on that backside. He chucks it deep. No safety over the top. And it's going to go incomplete there. Logan, being a quarterback, you know, former quarterback, he's missed two wide open throws, to be honest. What are you, what are you seeing early? Well, that last one was a little tougher. But I think he also had the sideline guy streak in that. He, that I thought that's where he was going. I saw him look backside. That's uh, The Buccaneers catch a break because that's just a throw you have to make. Yeah, that's two now. Those are two probably touchdown passes that he missed. As Martini's in the gun, two receivers split out to his right. Subbed in the game is tight end number 47, 47 being Chris Song. Little inside handoff there to Ambrose again, and the Buccaneers swarm it up. A there great play by the Buccaneers on second and 10, making it about second and seven, low, third and seven. Another another big play here for the Bucks defense. Can they get off the field? They should be off the field with that drop fumble. As we get to third and eight, looks like they're going to go four wide, two receivers on each side, and this Bucks crowd is getting a little ruckus here. Ambrose in the backfield. Marti from the gun takes a snap. Looks left. Oh, bring it Wide pressure. open. Oh, oh. one-handed grab made by number 20, 20 being. A.J. Marquette, the 5'10 sophomore, makes the play. And that's just a heartbreak there for the Buccaneers, Logan. It is. We were in his face. Or the Bucks were in his face. They brought pressure. I think they had two blitzers on that one, it looked like. Mm -hmm. Looked like that Off class. his back foot almost, too. When, when, they're, when their throws are high, you, know, you don't have all your, all your power and balance into it. First and 10 here. Looks about the 30. Looks like a buck. Jumped off sides, it's a free play. Martini chucks it deep, he's got a man. Incomplete, but there is P.I. on the play. Logan, the Bucks just in shambles early, but that's something you expect to see from a young team. Yes, yeah, young team indeed. They got 77 record-breaking number as mm -hmm. a team, and that was like something like 46. Mm -hmm. Exactly, actually. New guys that haven't played college football yet because the sophomores obviously didn't play last year. Mm -hmm. And they're really just looking for leadership to step up here. That's uh -huh. something we've seen from the Bucks at home early is just them being lackluster to start. But last week at Cornell, they came out guns blazing and fell apart. They're really looking to play one solid game this week, Logan. Yes, yes. The word around, the word around was they played a good second half week one and a good first half week two. So now we just got to string together two good halves. As it looks like they declined the, uh, for, uh, they declined the offsides. They declined the offsides and took the, the PI. A little loss there. As the it looks like they're about, look about a 20 yard line. Martini from the gun. Two receivers split out right, one to the left. My favorite part about college football, the look back over to the coach. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love the linemen too when they shift. Tight end on the right side, right tackle. Martini takes a snap, gives it off to Ambrose. Ambrose. Dukes and jives for about three yards really there. Really patient on, on that run. A little like energy there from the Buccaneers, Logan. Did you see that? Uh -uh. Number 36, Aiden Deal, the freshman. A little flex after the tackle. Turner, Aiden Deal. Beloit Turner. Really? Alum. That's awesome. Deal rocking the Brian Bosworth uh, neck pad, it looks like, there. As the Bucks, as the uh, Maroons have a second and eight. It says on the scoreboard, it looks about shorter than that. Martini from the gun. Play action looks left to Olsen. Olsen catches it. Tackle made by Gavin Thorpe as that's a first down. And now Maroons are first and goal. A very methodical, well played drive by the Maroons to come out here, Logan. They're attacking Gavin Thorpe. That's at least the third pass over his side. That's something we have seen looking at the tape, you know, talking with the players. Is Gavin Thorpe's size at 5'9, I think about 170, is something that most teams look at and attack. As we get the first and goal here, Martini from the gun. Little handoff to Ambrose. Ambrose scampers like up the middle. Read, like a little read option type. And it looks like he got about two yards there, and the Bucks stuffed it up. 
saving their treasure chest there as second and goal comes saving up next. Saving their treasure chest. That's the only way to put it. No to the name of the game. Speaking about the Bucks defensive coordinator, I, I uh, had lunch over there with Commons, a little interview. You talk about the you talked about the bend don't break. Just quick, you know, five second interview. What's you know what's your theory? Just bend don't break with this young team. As Martini from the gun takes it, looks like he hands it off to Ambrose. Ambrose runs into a wall, oh my. but bounces off like a bouncy ball and comes to the oh one yard line. And we got a fumble on the play as Gavin Thorpe recovers. <laughs> Wonder if looks to hold it up, but the side judge looks to give the Buccaneers a ball. Let's see what's going on. Hey, I'll tell you what though, two, two uh, turnover type plays for the Bucks early, I, that's a positive sign. That is, but it, it sucks is that other uh, side rep was overruled. So we got a third and goal here yeah, for the he Buccaneers. Yeah, he called it down right away. He did. Tight end the left side, Trucy was put up to the right. Martini takes a snap, hand it up to Ambrose for a third time, and he plunges right into the Bucks to Blooms to get the Maroons on the board. Six nothing Maroons. Logue. About a seven-minute drive, six-minute, seven-minute drive there for the Maroons. Yeah, that was pretty methodical. I it mean, was they had third and third and medium twice. Bucks had a chance to get off the field, couldn't quite do it. But you know, first possession of the game, feeling each other out still. Quite impressive by the Maroons coming down and on the road. The 49th-ranked Maroons really do look like a well-oiled machine there. As set to take the place kick is number 10, Will Goodman. The hold, Goodman. Goodman is, for lack of a better term, good. Good. As UC takes the score seven nothing, Logan, if you're at OC for the Buccaneers as they come to take the field, what are you telling your quarterback and your team as they're down seven nothing? Just trust yourself, trust what you see, trust your eyes, and just make it the easy play. You're not going to get it back at once, and it's only one score. It it's is only one score. You can you can make that up. It's it easy. Is, yeah, it's super easy. It's not like the end of the world. You just have to take it one play at a time. One play at a time. Get that first hit too. First hit, first completion, first incompletion. Settle in. Logan, and looking around on the uh, University of Chicago Maroon sidelines, they got the Tony Romo hats going, the Mark Sanchez hats going here. As a place kicker puts on, Will Golden puts on a hat. So it's, so that's why I like to see. I enjoy the hats, Logan. What, backwards? Yes. He made the face, not a fan. I didn't know Tony Romo was, I didn't know that was his he, thing. He would come to the sidelines yeah. and put on that backwards hat and he'd look over film. Burlington's finest, Tony Burlington's Romo. Burlington's finest, Wisconsin native. Could have gone pro in golf. Basketball. Basketball. All stay with Karan Butler. Karan Butler. As we get ready for this kickoff, looks like Goldman, there's two tens, correct? So Goldman was not wearing a hat, but Goldman's going to kick off. Fitzpatrick and Thorpe back to take the kickoff. And the Maroons are looking to paint a good drive here, Logan. Goldman on the kick. Wow, wobbly kick there as Thorpe looks to return it. Thorpe off the bounce. Cuts in the midside. Trying to make something on the outside and gets wrangled up around the 25 yard lines there. Looks about the 24 yard line our scoreboard says. And as we have a little quick break in the action to talk about, just thankful to our cameraman and TJ Turner and Jabari and Zao up top, Logan Patrick Kirk director, shout out to Jonathan Kelly for making all this possible, Angelo Callum for all their information. And stick around at halftime. We'll have an interview with these two cameramen who are Buccaneer freshmen playing basketball. Something to look forward to. Back to the action, though. Look at the Buccaneers, first and ten. Schaefer in the gun. Looks like the tailback's going to be number five. Now, listed on the depth chart, Bucks trips right. Ten in the left side with Nato over there. Number five, Lorenzo Poe. It is Poe. Not listed on our depth chart. We have Poe takes it up the middle. Poe makes a juke, but is met by a palette of colors there. A color of maroons there, Logan. Making it about second and ten. Logan, watching uh, college football, Division One and NFL, they have most of their first 20 plays scripted. Do you think the Buccaneers are one of those teams who has their plays scripted? Yes. Yeah, I, I think you, you got to – because you practice that in, in practice. Really, you practice and practice. You do practice and practice. Believe it or not, um, and I think to practice those plays, you get your you get your line, your quarterback, your receivers, your skill positions comfortable running those plays, and then after that, you let it go. Logan, we're not talking about practice. We're talking about the game. As Jacob Schaefer takes it from the gun, Silas say motions to the right side, two to the right. A little Allen Iverson there for you, Logan. 
as Schaefer takes it from the gun. Two-step drop, looks for Poe. Wobbly pass, but Poe makes a juke and is met by a plethora of Chicago Maroons. We did mention earlier that we want to see Schaefer complete passes, but a third and long early is scary for a freshman quarterback. Yes. Yeah, but hey, maybe we can, uh, maybe the Bucks can catch a gift. Logan, like I did a quick, did. quick interview with one of the Beloit Buccaneers running back, and he told me that the Maroons have only blitzed more than four guys three times this year. That is a crazy stat. They won both of their games handedly. And another player to watch out is at the top here is their safety number 24, Brandon Junker, the 6'4 junior. Wayne 198 is just a menace there for the Maroons as we have a timeout here for the Buccaneers. Oh, correction, Chicago take a timeout on 38. Interesting. Yeah, it didn't seem like they had the right personnel out there. It looked like the Buccaneers were a little confusion there as Coach Ted walked out to the field quickly to. Yes, the Bucks did also look confused. I thought they called it too, but I, I heard more chirping on the uh, Chicago side, which is probably why they called the timeout. It is early in the season. A lot of miscommunication going on as University of Chicago looked like a well-oiled machine on offense, but in defense, still working to get that level. Yes, and with these first games, you forget the penalties too. That is huge. Just being just rust of, of not playing and – you don't know how the refs are going to call it this year, what rules maybe have changed or altered a little bit. Logan, so as we have some time, something I want to ask you about is the targeting. As In the first game here at home, we had three targeting calls. Wow. I think it's just detrimental to the game that the players are kicked out because the plays that – if it's like a legit targeting where he goes for that head, I understand kicking him out. But if it's accidental head-to-head -head contact, that just sucks for the player. The accidental is tougher than the targeting of like – the crown of the helmet to the shoulder to the mm -hmm. chest. It's like, that's not head-to-head. -head. I understand player safety. But, yeah, kicking yeah. out. It's something that needs to be talked about as Nana Reyes moves on the right side. Schaefer in the shotgun. Schaefer rolls out right, a little PA roll out right, looking deep. Has a receiver. Keeps it, then throws it, and goes incomplete on third and long. Jose Guillen, the junior receiver, was wide open there on that right side, but a a maroon was right there. It looked like they were in that some uh, man coverage there, Logan. Thought maybe he could, maybe he could uh, scramble for that first down. But yeah, the maroon were coming in hot. A fan favorite out to punt now is Alonzo Casillas. Casillas was the special teams player of the year for the Buccaneers last year. He's got a booming leg. It's just if they can get him the ball. Is the last time we were in this situation, they threw it over his head and into the end zone for a safety. Yeah, having a good punch is one of those curses of like you got a good one, but you don't want to use them because that means you're punting a lot. Uh, John Ryan for the Seahawks was very important for them that when they had that dynasty with the Legion of Boom. As Casillas takes the snap, and the punt goes. Looks about 30 yards. Let's get a nice roll. It rolls backwards. Picked up by number 13, Jose Guillen, the receiver, at about the 50-yard lines as the Maroons look to take over on downs. Not something you want to see early, Logan. No, especially given a short field. Now they only have half the field to go, the Maroons. But nonetheless, that defense is here to make another stand as the energy is most likely back up. You saw it teaming and looking ready to burst as they were inside the red zone. Let's see how they react. Here's some chatter from the Beloit faithful. It is a ruckus crowd here as Martini takes in the shotgun receiver to the right. Ambrose takes it up the middle and powers through for a first down. Man, he just kept those legs going, didn't he? Logan, that halfback draw has just been killing that Buccaneers. That little hesitation, is he going to throw? Handoff. A little halfback base action there going right up the middle. Halfback base. As it looks like a first and 10 here from the Beloit. 36 peers. Martini from the gun, two receivers split up to his right and two receivers to his left. Takes a snap. Fumbles oh, it and just hops on it. Looks like a little miscommunication there between the quarterback and the running back. I got excited there. Ball's on the ground. What's going to happen? Who, who comes up with it? Martini just fell in it, but Logan, as we've talked about already with multiple times, the former quarterback, who's that on? The quarterback or the running back? It's always the quarterback. It's always the quarterback. It's always the quarterback. It's always the quarterback. Is that what your quarterback Do I agree on? with that? No. No. <laughs> 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 no, but as a quarterback, you have to take responsibility for that. Bucks almost jump again. Martini has a nice hard count there. As they all look over to the sideline, two receivers again split up to the left and the right from the gun. The snap, Martini drops back, a little two-step drop, a little out over action over number 20. Nice tackle by Gavin Thorpe as Thorpe takes him back. 
on the reception was AJ Marquette, the sophomore. But Thorpe showing a little bit of resilience, a little pow. Great form tackle right there in the open field. Logan, the Yo, pads popping a little bit. Pads are popping. We love to hear it. It's a great Saturday afternoon. The famous Deion Sanders was talking about how one time, I forget who it was, I think it was Emmett Smith was running by him. And Deion saw him and he said, I made a business decision to fall over and not take the hit. Yeah, can you imagine? You got Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, and then Deion Sanders on the other well, side. Dude. He was on that Dirty Birds team. As Martini drops back from the gun, steps up, makes Johnny Manziel left and right. And Ooh. two Buccaneers giving a nice hit. See, this is where I get nervous, Logan. Because could that be a targeting call, which, which I got scared. He yeah, he led, he led with the shoulder. He comes from that backside, and they make any head-to-head -head yeah. contact. He's out. That is tricky. It is. Run DMC, it's tricky, as the play was made by the senior we highlighted in Josh Shapiro. And most of the time, players aren't going in to hurt themselves when they tackle. You know, because dudes want to play. So they're not going yes. to put themselves at risk. But then you have those guys that just don't care. As I understand that part of it, too. As uh, D'Ambrose takes it up for about a seven-yard gain there. Made about a second and three. The Maroons just cutting through this Buccaneers defense like a hot knife through butter. They are marching. You should call them the Saints. <laughs> the Aints, as we say. As Martini from the gun, D'Ambrose next to him, takes the snap, hands it off to D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose left and right, back left. Ambrose looks to be super elusive there for that Buccaneers as that's our first down and our first and goal for the Chicago Maroons. They're working D'Ambrose this drive for sure. Couple passes thrown in there too, don't get me wrong, but D'Ambrose says feed me. I'm super impressed by D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose is really limber. He's got those, he must be hitting the, uh, the ladder drills every day in practice there it looks like as he's just going left and right as we got a timeout here. And as we got a timeout on the field, I just want to thank our trainers, our trainers Nate, trainers Kelly, our new trainer for all the hard work they put in throughout the season. And a quick shout out to James Eyeshy, the former trainer for the Bullet Buccaneers here two years ago. They just bring the they bring the smiles, they bring the energy. They're always there for us, and we just couldn't be more grateful as a school to have people like that in our system and who represent us well. In two weeks, we'll be back here as Bullet will play Grinnell. Little uh. Match up there, uh, Logan, between the 223rd ranked Grinnell. What are they over there in Grinnell? They're the Grinnell. I don't know what they are, actually. Well, trivia question of the day is what is Grinnell's mascot name? As Grinnell will take on Beloit. Like the Pioneers or something. Yes, probably. it is the Pioneers, I believe. Because they got a shield as their yes. as their logo. I think this is just the water break. I don't think anybody called a timeout. Oh, no. Beloit called a timeout. Each team is taking one timeout this quarter already. The quarter's flying by there. Referees get a little agua. I'll tell you what I don't miss is these hot days in football. I, I agree there, Logan. But would you rather have a cold day? No. <laughs> <laughs> Those hot July, August. Those August two days are killer. Noon practices. Ooh, two days, baby. Martini looks right, quick screen over there to his receiver. Receiver stops on a dime and a tackle is made by number 27, Dallas McKinney. McKinney not letting up here, being a staple for that Beloit Buccaneers defense. It looks like it'd be a second and nine for the Maroons. It gets tough to call plays when you get inside the 10. The field's obviously shortened. And you know what? This is where you, you stick to your bread and butter, and I would, I would predict that's giving it to D'Ambrose. Something that we've seen in, the, in college football in the NFL is a lot of motion that comes in when you're inside the 10. As Martini takes a snap, fakes the screen, and takes it himself, but only gets about two yards on the play. But we see that in the NFL more with the Packers moving Devontae Adams in motion. And the Buccaneers, once they get into the red zone, will do that with Nano Re Reyes or with Silas Say. And those As touch passes. Ah, those touch passes are popular, too. Look at old Tim Tebow touch pass. Yeah, like little Patty Mahomes. Patty Mahomes. Tom Brady. <laughs> no, don't put Tom Brady in there. <laughs> Martini wearing the number 12. Look a little like Brady on this drive. So back to the action. Martini from the shotgun. Two receivers left, two to his right. 
running back in the gun. Takes a snap. It's a pass. Quick out to the receiver. Oh. oh. In coverage was number 24. That was pretty solid UK coverage Davis. on that on Great that coverage play. on he the quick out. Maybe, I mean, obviously just a half step late, but right where you want to be position-wise. Logan, we just talked about it before pregame. What's the number one re, uh, goal for a quarterback throwing that out route? Throw it to the outside. If you're going to miss, no one's going to catch it. You had a miss to the outside, and he missed to the outside. As scoring the touchdown there is number 19, Matt Calaglia, the senior. So a 13-0 lead as Will Goldman takes the kick. And just like Gold's Gym, it's good. Quick, f oh, there is some laundry on the field, though. Early indication is a false start. Let's see what it is. Looks like it's going to be on the Bucks. Everyone's heading off the field. Offsides on the Buccaneers there, Logan. When it rains, it pours, as the Buccaneers when are quickly rains, down 14 up in this first quarter. <laughs> Bucks being down 14 doesn't stop this crowd from being ruckus. There's and still chatter. I got a fever, and only cowbell is the prescription I for it. I got a fever. As we have a couple cowbells here out in the crowd, they have over a thousand people here at this Beloit Buccaneers game. And just a quick shout out to the Beloit Buccaneers basketball team for doing the chains and the footballs. Ball boy crew, camera crew, camera crew as well. It's just the community is so ingrained in helping one another out here this year, and it's just. Another great. I saw some baseball guys doing shocker or soccer shags. They were. They were being they the were ball boys. Soccer ball, ball boys. Jack Tempone, the best ball boy there in the Midwest. I think I saw Evan, maybe. Yeah, over Evan there. Zenger. Greg might have been a Greg. Over yes, there. Greg. Yeah, there was one more. He was on the far side of the field. Greg's looking to have him. a big baseball season. As Is he? Yeah. As uh, Bloyd lost their catcher to Arizona State, Division One catcher now, mm. Bronx Ball. And they lost two. Jacob graduated as well. Mm -hmm. As Goldman on the kick, A.J. Fitzpatrick and Greg Thorpe deep. Kick, it's a deep one, higher than the last one. Fitzpatrick looks to fair catch it, but he drops it in the end zone, but it's going to be a touchback. As the Buccaneers take over here, first and 10. Logan, I'm going to you again. What are you telling your team? What are you telling your line? Down 14-0. Um, I'm, I'm thinking let's get, let's get, let's string a couple first downs together. Let's get into their territory, get some positive plays. You know, if we stall, but we march it, you gotta be happy with at least um, getting down the field. One thing I've heard from the Buccaneers faithful and from interviews with the team is they do have sets under the gu uh, under center. I'd like to see that more on first down, a little couple handoffs to Nino or Silas to get it going because the shotgun has been snuffed out by this Chicago Maroons team. Uh, under center seems to be going away in college for these for these spread teams anyways. It's sad to see. You know, your center. traditional like Wisconsin and um, you know, those ground and pound Iowa. As Schaefer runs a power option left there with number seven, Silas Say. Say uh, scampers for about three yards, but Logan, that's something really missing here in uh, in college football is that classic under the center quarterback, that John Elway quarterback, that Brett Favre quarterback. Yeah, yeah, it's just a different game now. Everyone, everyone is so fast and they just spread it out and get the ball out. But the Buccaneers do have some hosses there on the offensive line as they are led by their center, Corey McNeil, the senior, coming in at 300 pounds. Every member of this Bucks offensive line is over 250 pounds, Logan. Yeah, Mitchell Wright. I remember seeing him on campus last year. I thought, who's that big boy? It's a solid offensive line as Schaefer on second down and seven. Takes a snap from the gun. Looks right. He's got Nano, oh. but he's got, he's got a receiver number 89, Stanley Hippolyte. Stanley Hippolyte. Looking like Bubba Franks for the Packers back in the day. Goes for a first down, and the Bucks are running. That's what you need right there. Easy, easy throw and catch. Move the chains. There looks to be an injury on the field. But, Logan, I think that's a quarterback's best friend is the tight end. I think that's one of the most important things for an offense is having that reliable safety blanket. I think yes. Tom Brady has it with Gronk. Rodgers has it with uh, my guy Robert Tanya from Indiana State. It's just, a, and it's a staple of the Wisconsin Badgers offense as well with Jake Ferguson, a Memorial graduate, also being super solid. Yeah, that safety blanket's so nice to have because you don't have to waste it down, you know, throwing that out of bounds. Something, uh, the West Coast offense is something I miss seeing more of. There's more running game, there's more option, power option, we see read options, but that West Coast little dink and dunk uh, is something I miss seeing. <laughs> that Joe Montana, Jerry Rice back in the day. I just thought the West Coast was let it fly. Well, you'd start with on first and second down, you kind of set them up, and then you fly. Mm. 
Yeah, what was it, Walsh? Yeah, it was Bill Walsh Bill here in Walsh. San Francisco. Yeah. And then Steve Young. Talk about talk about uh, Brett Favre and Rogers back to back. Montana, Montana and Steve Young. That's a duo there. Yeah. As Gary on first Rice. and ten from the 43, Nana Reyes goes in motion. Gets off the line. A little miscommunication by the Bucks. A handoff to Silas Say. But Silas says nothing on that as he gets swarmed by some Maroons. Yeah, the Bucks definitely looked uh, looked a little messed up there when with the sh when the motion happened. Reyes was still looking at the referee, and some of the linemen seemed did like not someone go. Seemed like someone needed to hop off the line, and they didn't. Luckily, didn't cost us five yards. Those flags, as we talked about earlier, those penalties will be integral to this game. But honestly, it might have been because of the crowd and the loudness of it. As it was getting huge. It's possible. As the Beach Boys said, good vibrations were being picked up on the crowd on the field, but nothing doing. As Silas Say gets called up. Be a third and long after a huge first down there, Logan. Looks like we're bringing in the uh, passing substitutions there, Logan. Yeah, this is a clear passing down. I'm not sure what we have drawn up, what the Bucks have drawn up for a third and, what is this, 14, third and 14. It was about third and 15 there, Logan. Something we don't get to see out of Schaefer is let him letting the ball fly. Schaefer is a tough kid and a good runner, but not a lot of letting him let the cannon loose. He's one of these downs where you just maybe get eight make it a more manageable punt to see if we can get him inside the 20. I love the leadership there by Jacob Schaefer in the gun. Two receivers on both sides. Schaefer steps back. A little out route there to 29. 29 being. Brian Casado. Casado not listed on the depth chart in the top three running backs, which is a Swiss Army knife for the Buccaneers. Logan, you were right there. A little out to make it a more fourth and manageable four punter, Alonzo Castilla. Let's get a little yards. So now you got now you got the the punt return man at his 20. Maybe you get all this one. He doesn't catch it. You get them inside the 15 or 10. Well, there's 10 seconds left here in the first quarter. We still ah. have not seen a target to A.J. Fitzpatrick as he's done nothing all game. And it looks like the Buccaneers are going to let the clock run out. So after one quarter, the Maroons of Chicago are up 14-0 on the Buccaneers of Beloit. As the Maroons are working on all facets, the Buccaneers' ships has some leaks and creaks in it. Logan, going into the second quarter, what do you want to see out of this Buccaneers team? I want to see him get some stops. I want to see him get some stops. I want to see him get a couple more first downs, see some momentum and energy, for energy from that sideline as they just seem to be idle right now over there. Um, and the Chicago sideline is, is pretty jazzed up. We're going to wait for the second quarter here, but it looks like the Maroons are going to take over on downs when we return. Even Gus Johnson needs a break there for a couple seconds there, ladies and gentlemen, as we return to the second quarter between the Beloit Buccaneers and the Chicago Maroons. Alonzo Castillo, the fan favorite, in the punt. You know, I've always been a fan of when the ball's at midfield at the end of a quarter change. It's just something that work of art. It's the beautiful. ideal, this is almost as ideal as it gets. If it was fourth and five, the chains wouldn't have to move. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, hundred percent. Castillo gets it off. A decent punt. No fair catch as the Buccaneer misses a tackle. And it and looks like he's surrounded by, by number goes 45. Nowhere on the return. Ethan Lavera. Lavera, the freshman from Elk Mound, Wisconsin. Lavera. And on the return there for the Maroons, number 19, Matt Queglia, the senior, 5'11. The Maroons look to take over from the 30 yard line of their own side of the field. And right now, Logan, if they were a base, if they were a batter in baseball, they would be two for two, batting a thousand. 
They're hot right dude, now. Dude, do you start three for three? How many? How many? How many guys go three for three? No one goes three for three. Everyone goes three for three. No one goes three That's for three. It's the old saying: never thrice. I don't know who says that. Ah, ah baseball saying. As Martini <laughs> takes from the shotgun, a little weird motion there. Martina, oh, he's Martini looking, looking deep. deep. He's rolling out. He Patrick Mahomes throws oh, it down the field. He's got a man, but it's off target there. As in coverage is number 27, Dallas McKinney. I can't tell if that was a, a bad throw on accident or on purpose. I think rolling out to your right and being a right-handed quarterback is still ah. It's it's easier than rolling left it is. when throwing with your right. Just rolling out in general is tough though. I was always a fan of the rollout. Well, a planned then rollout. Could, then you could, yeah, true. Well, you bring, well, you kind of bring the guard in, or your whole line. You oh, know. that's a that's a nice play. As Martini from the gun, D'Ambrose next to him, hands off D'Ambrose up the middle. D'Ambrose only three yards. Has the Bucks got a quick third and about eight? Something you'd like to see out of this young Buccaneers team. Yes, doesn't matter how you get it. You need third. Third and longs is the key to victory on defense. Logan, well, one of my favorite sayings is the most important play of the game is the current play. I think this right now could be one of the most important plays of the game looking back on film. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly big stop here. Pick up early momentum in the second quarter. Two receivers split out right, two receivers split out to the left. Martini in the backfield with D'Ambrose on third and long. D'Ambrose takes his gun. Looking deep, chucks it, and it's a caught. Number 20 on the play, number 20. A.J. Marquette caught the touchdown earlier, I believe, and now he's just killing the Buccaneers' defense. He's on third and long. That's the Maroons paint a new picture and paint a first and ten. That's three for three now on third downs for the for the Maroons. We don't even need a statistician for that one. It has been pretty evident that third down is their down. Let's see how the Buccaneers respond. The leader's Lenz Bernadal has not been doing much. As two receivers split up to the right, tight end over the right tackle. Lens, Lens is rocking the long sleeves on a day like this. Martini He's in the brave. gun, play action, a little, oh. Misses it to number 19, 19 right there on the catch. Was Matt Qu Qualia. The long sleeves are a tough look, you gotta admit. On he, a day like today, I'm not sure. The Miami native does not feel the heat. This is cold to him, to be honest. <laughs> this 70 you're degrees. Right. You're right, I should have I taken that into account. He comes here, and the moment it hits 80, he's cold. <laughs> uh, that's true. He used to live across from him freshman year. Is it? Mm -hmm. he's, wearing it he's wearing his North Face October 1st. He was. As second and 10, a little handoff there to D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose makes it to the outside and is pushed out of bounds by number eight on the Buccaneers, Trevon Colvin, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. I'll tell you what, this offensive line for uh, Chicago's Got their got their fair share of pancakes early on today. I've been seeing seventies got a couple early. We just had one on this last drive. They're getting off the ball. You could be down at Jerry's local restaurant with all these pancakes out all here, Logan. Pan yeah, Jeff Saturday would be proud. Jeff Saturday indeed. He's still down recently. He looks good. He looks good, he does. Joe Thomas. Ah. He looks good. As first and ten there from about the forty five yard line for the Maroons. Martini, he's looking deep. Oh, it's off Dallas McKinney's head as it went through the hands of Matt Quaglia, Quaglia and McKinney just got hit right in the helmet. Right in the face mask. The turnover That's the sword. Tip drill. Oh, the tip drill. We work indeed. on the tip drill in practice. Ran that since middle school, but sets up a second and ten as I got excited. I heard the third down music. Sorry to call it the production team there. I got excited there, but second and ten here from the 45 on the Beloit side. Martini in the gun like always. Watch Clearly on the slot here, ladies and gentlemen, at home. Clearly takes it. And handoff to a new running back. Insert 34. 34 is going to the outside. He slips and falls. 34 being tailback. Reese Bamarito Logan. To make it sure, we'll call him RBL. RBL on the carry. RBL. Went for about 15 yards there. A little Qu Clyde Edwards Hilaire lookalike there for my guy RBL of University of Chicago. So that sets up a first and 10 on the 31 for the Maroons. D'Ambrose checks back in the game. Two receivers to the right. Martini from the gun. Hands it off to D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose makes a one-step cut to the left side. It's only about two yards as the whole Buccaneers ship was there to stop him. Looks like the Black Pearl on that one, Logan. Yeah, the Pirates of the Caribbean-esque. Looking for a Captain Jack Sparrow on this defense, though. As it's hard... 
and no offense to linemen, it's hard for a lineman to be the leader of that defense. You look for a safety or a middle linebacker because yes, yes. the linemen are in the trenches. They're doing the dirty work. Yeah, the Ray Lewis's, the you know the and your linebacker, your linebackers and your safeties, they can see it all. <laughs> You're in the middle in the trenches. They're the, the line. They're the quarterbacks of the defense. They are. We had our safety. We called him the Rover. The Rover. Oh, I love the Rover yeah. call. Martinez he was our gun. quarterback. Hands off to D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose, another two cut. Gets the first down as they're inside the 20, inside the red zone. As it really looks like Thanksgiving dinner out here because they're just cutting through everything on this Buccaneers defense. They're eating. Everybody eats. Um. Yeah, if Bucks, are, Bucks, even make him go backwards, maybe two yards. It'd be a good you know, stop here. Get a stop, yeah. At least, at least make him go sideways, at least. Check it back in the game for the Maroons is RBL, the running back, Reese Bermuda Logan. As he takes the outside, jukes and jives and gets stuck right up the middle for a gain of about three on the carry. Looks like nothing can stop this Maroons offense. As everything is working. Yeah, they, they're running it enough, but that opens up the pass, and then they pass enough, and it opens back up the run. Looks like they're sparing D'Ambrose this drive as RBL. As RBL is taking most of the, the handoffs Reece Reece recently. Reese Bummerita Logan. I like the name. I do I like, like the, the, the name. last part of the ah, name. Ah, you like the last part. The last the last part. The last sophomore. Third. As Martini looks to pass, he's looking in the end zone. Instead goes to Quelia. Quelia catches it, and just like that, it's first and goal Maroons. They're catching everything. Passes may not be right there, but their receivers are catching everything. They had that one-hander earlier right here in front of us. Quite impressive. They had this one. They had it. Yeah, I think they had another one that was like. The touchdown? Um, the touchdown possibly. was impressive as well. So we get first and goal here for the Maroons. Maroons only two receivers to the right, none on the left. As they go more power formation, hands off to uh, D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose is stuffed at the three-yard line, it looks like. Making it about a second and it looks like four for the Maroons. So we got a second and goal here for the Maroons as another power formation with two receivers on the right into the tight end and uh, running back. D'Ambrose takes it up the middle and it looks like he scored on the play. The oh. ball is out. There's no whistle. The Buccaneers are running. It was picked up by the Buccaneers. He's running down the sideline. Breaks the tackle. He's down the sideline and steps out of bounds as the whistle is finally blown. Nice block at the end there by 57. Picking up on the play. Was number 39, 39. This Bucks crowd is rocking right now after that. Darrell, Darrell Thorne Jr., I thought they scored. They put the ball on the ground. Bucks scooped it up. Got it back to what, the 40? A little flip-flop there. As they're going to take it back to the 40-yard line, but the energy is peaking here in Beloit at Strong Stadium. That's just what the Bucks needed, something like that to get some energy. I heard a call from the doctor, and that's what he ordered. Prescription of a that fumble and a turnover. <laughs> Get that turnover baton out that there. Cowboy, that cowbell prescription wasn't <laughs> working. I love it. As Schaefer's in the gun, one receiver set out left, to the right tight end, next to the right tackle. Schaefer takes a snap. Looks right quick. He's got a man open, but he keeps it. Schaefer's running around, throws it. It looks like the referee is going to rule his knee was down. But it looks like Nano Reyes is down as well. Reyes gets up, the Bloyd Turner product looks okay, but it's going to go as a sack, called a coverage sack there in the book, Logan. Reyes going to have to come out for a play. Are they deeming him? Yep. Yep, Rev's taking him out for a play because he's hurt. As it gets closer to October, Logan, it looks like someone said Beetlejuice, 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 as that was the death of that momentum for the Buccaneers. Yeah, and it's tough to have that happen on first down, too. It is indeed. As it looks like a second and about a Tiger Woods drive away. Schaefer in the gun. Looks left. So he's out there to his tailback. And that was about, makes it about a third and manageable as on the catch was number 29, 29 being Brian Casado. 
Casado, the sophomore, hailing from Holland Beach, Florida. Making it look easy out there. Just make make the easy plays there. It's Jacob Schaefer, the freshman quarterback. Gray shirt, as they call it there in Division Three, Looking to make a little headway here. Yeah, definitely nice completion to get some yardage back. and Still throwing it long, but you got plays for third and seven. Third and long here. Looks like Isaac Wellman split out left to freshman, Guillen to the right, and also Casado in the slot. Little power option. Oh, it's a fake over to Reyes. Now breaks the tackle, breaks one, but on third and long, an interesting call there by the Buccaneers. It looked like a delayed handoff. Interesting call. I was thinking some pass, maybe some sort of slant or out. Looks like the Buccaneers are going to send the punt team. You want to see Nano in the run game, but you'd like to see that call on first down or second down, not on a third and long. Yes, yes. Not a lot of trust there in quarterback Jacob Schaefer. I guess not. And he just completed one before. And it looked good. Uh, coaches must see something we're not, obviously, right? That's why we're paid to be that's, in the booth. That's why we're here and they're there. We're the Gus Justin wannabes as Alonzo Castilla is back at the 30-yard line to punt the ball. I don't know about you, but I want to be Joel Klatt. Joel Klatt. Long snap. Castilla gets it. Kicks it with the laces. And he gets a decent punt as it goes from the 30 to the other 30. And it rolls inside the 20. As we talked about special teams being important, a booming punt there by there Alonzo go. Castilla. Change it. Change the field. Thought you were going to give me a little laces out, Dan, there. Laces when I said, out. Laces out, Dan. As it looks like the Maroons are going to take over on the 15-yard line, and the energy seems to be picking back up there for this Buccaneer squad. So we pick back up here, second quarter, seven minutes left in this second quarter, 14 nothing Maroons. Buccaneers looking to get any momentum back as the senior quarterback, Philly Martini's in the gun, takes the snap. And a handoff to, oh, play action pass over there to receiver, and he breaks one Buccaneer tackle, and Dallas McKinney makes a tackle on the catch with 81. Elliot Grace is senior. I do believe that is Elliot Grace from Madison Memorial High School. Really? Elliot 81 Gra there in Chicago? Yes, Grace was on the state team. That went to state with Jake Ferguson and Chris Knight. Wow. Our hoops? sophomore year. For hoops? Yes, for hoops. That was a Memorial team who got bounced by some Perry in the playoffs to Cooper Nelson. Wow. Little Wisconsin factor there. As a handoff to RBL is taken left outside. Breaking the outside corner. He breaks two tackles. That's another 10-yard gain for RBL. Reese Bomarito Logan just coming in and being a Swiss Army knife to this Buccaneers defense. Yeah, he's been running, running rampant early on in this game. So as the clock continues, ball in Logan's favorite spot at the 50-yard line. <laughs> a first Only at the end of quarters. It's still a beautiful shot right here, a beautiful it does setting. Look good. Great to see. Martini from the gun. Hands it off again to RBL, RBL. Nothing but daylight there. He takes it for a seven-yard game. Look at the trip up there. As the Buccaneers are on their heels here. Yeah, and back to that Chicago line. They're clearing space up front. They're making it easy for for the backs of Chicago to, to find space. Indeed, Logan, indeed. So a second and three looks like there for the Maroons. Set up to the left side, there is 17. Zach Olsen on the right side, Elliot Grays. Martini takes a snap, turns it up to RBL. And Reese Bamarito, Logan is finally stopped, bringing up a third and short. Logan, all signs point to the Maroons going for it on fourth down. So as the Buccaneers defense, what are you playing for here on this drive? And this down. Um, keep them where they're at. Because, yeah, if they, it is two down. I think you're going to go for it here on fourth. So expect to see a pass here out of the Maroons. Does look like pass. I mean, I guess they don't do shotgun anyways. Maroons from the shotgun. Keeps it himself. Martini's got the first and more as he breaks the outside. Gives him a Derrick Henry stiff arm. The ball pops out, but he looked to be down. A nice hit there from number 22 for the Buccaneers. Jordan Wells, a freshman from Lawrence, Kansas. But Martini, a little shake and bake to the outside. Looking like yeah, Dwayne the Rock in the game plan. That's three times they put it on the ground now in and Chicago. And we've talked about it, third down, third down, third down. Not our down. Not our down. First and 10, it appears about the 20, about the 20, we've got 23 there, I believe. A timeout on the field as the Buccaneers are on their heels. 
as we take this time out, just a quick update. 14 nothing New Chicago. Five minutes here left in the second quarter. And if you're watching this as a student or a Chicago former alum, you can't say anything better about this field. You got the baseball field in the background, the softball field in the background. Oh, it's a beautiful view. From where standing, you can see the soccer field as well. It's just an excellent. So we got tennis courts over to our right. An excellent complex, Logan. Strong stadium complex. I would put the Buccaneers uh, facilities as top notch in the conference. I would have to say so. They're they're up there. As we have visited multiple uh, complexes there. Just something great to see. But back to the game, talking football, talking shop. This Buccaneers team needs to make a stop here, and they need to make it soon. As a 21 nothing might be a dagger to the Buccaneers early on with a young quarterback and a young team. Yeah, three, well, three scores, it's not going to, at this rate. This isn't the New England Patriots of 2018. They're not coming back from that. But still, all the same, they will be trying their hardest as Martini from the gun takes it to RBL. Martini looks deep. He's got Elliot Gray's wide open in the end zone. Greg Thorpe right there, but it looks like wow. Elliot Gray stole it from Thorpe there, and that is a touchdown for the Mar Maroons of Chicago. Gray's went up top where Mama hides the cookies and stole it for that the was, third touchdown of the game. That was a good play by both players. That's one of those... That's as a cornerback, or you just hate it? You made the right, but just went right through your hands. Gray's listed here at 6'3", 205, is a little bit bigger than the 5'9", 170 Thorpe. Hey, but still Thorpe was right there in position, just missed the play. Kudos to Thorpe there, as Goldman on the PAT, the holder of Olsen, it looks like another jump there from the Buccaneers, as it's good. Most likely, on the kickoff, it'll be pushed. Ball boy finally caught the extra point. Penalty, ah, little Jake Bumstead out there getting lost. As it looks like the penalty was declined, and we'll get the kickoff. 21 nothing here as we get close to the second half. Logan still being down 21. We still have a bunch of fans here, and it's nice to see. This is this is where that pride kicks in that I was talking about earlier. You just you're proud to be a buck in these days. Well, looking over there at the student section, it's one of the biggest student sections we've seen here on our years in campus. The first week yeah. was huge, as I'm there was seeing some soccer, baseball players supporting each other. That picture on social media was surrounded. That student section was packed. It's yeah. just as packed. As Goldman looks off the kick, Thorpe and AJ Fitzpatrick back on the return. Fitzpatrick still has not done anything on the day. He's looking to be. Hasn't even had a target, if a I'm not mistaken. He has not. Looking to be a spark plug as Goldman kicks a booming kick into the end zone. A fair catch by Fitzpatrick. That's up the Buccaneers at the 25 coming. But something's got to happen here, Logan. Yeah, I'd like to see them get, you know, I keep saying it, but string some first downs together and get into the opponent territory. Get some positive plays on their side of the field, get some momentum. So they, uh, they get the ball, they get the ball to start the second half, the Bucks do. We do, as the Bucks here are first and 10 from their own 25. And as we talked about, that Chicago Maroons team not blitzing more than four guys on the play. Are looking to keep stuffing this Beloit Buccaneers team. Schaefer from the gun, trips left, one receiver right, takes a snap, fake handoff, takes it himself, a little miscommunication, and he's wrapped up in the backfield there by number 44, George Coyle, the linebacker, the senior out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Always makes you wonder who messed up. Looked to be on different telegraphs there as yes, Schaefer looked yes. to want to hand it off and then thought it was a pass. It looked like this receiver on this screen wasn't looking or they were gonna pump it and go, but the go route didn't go. Logan, it is always the quarterback's it fault. Like. Always the quarterback's <laughs> fault. And those RPOs are tricky and hard to run. Yeah, because you also got to remember the linemen, too, because they're getting downfield because they're blocking like it's a run. Mm -hmm. So you got to throw it before they get three yards downfield. Hippolyte in motion. Oh, it looks like correction. There's a fumble on the play. Schaefer fumbled again. That was Brian Casado in motion. 
fake the handoff to him and fumble it as he looked to try and hand it off to looks like a Lorenzo Poe back there. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was a if he was supposed to hand it off to Casado on this motion or if he was going to pull it because it looked like he got deep in the handoff on Casado and then pulled it late. A little confusion out there indeed, Logan, as a <laughs> third and honestly forever for the Buccaneers. Quick out, something to get it more manageable for our punter, Alonzo Castilla. Trips left again. Casado in the slot, Guillen outside. Fitzpatrick to the right, Schaefer takes it. Five-step drop, little screen there to Poe, but Poe looks to have caught it, maybe fumbled it, but it's gonna be incomplete as the third down screen is snuffed out by the Maroons. So with 3.48 left here in the second quarter. Nothing doing here for the Buccaneers. Out is Alonzo Castillo to punt, punting and returning for the Maroons. This is number 19, 19 being Matt Quaylea. Quaylea had a touchdown already on the day. Last time refused a fair catch and juked a couple Buccaneers for about a 10 yard return. Castillo, a little wide snap, the punt. It's a decent punt, looks about 50 yards. Quilia catches it, Buccaneer missed the tackle and he stumbles there for about four yards. On the tackle looks like to be number 31, Cruz Vargas, the 5'9 sophomore from Tuttle, Oklahoma made the play. But the Maroons start once again on the Buccaneers side of the field. Yeah, that's not a winning combination right now for this Bucks. Going backwards, short, short punts, long returns. Logan, the only thing you can say is you've hit rock bottom. There's nowhere but up from here. You got to go up. Nowhere yep. but up. So as the Ruins come out looking at their fourth score of the game, I believe they're three for four on scoring drives this game, Logan. Three for four. And that, and that one was they were in the end zone. They, they fumbled. fumbled. So three for four with an asterisk. Martini in the gun. B. Ambrose next to him. Martini, play action. Looks to the receiver. He's got his receiver there at number 17. Number 17, Zach Olsen gets all the way up about the 20-yard line. On the tackle, look like Thorpe, but just like that, I'm seeing Hughes. I'm not seeing Maroon. I'm seeing Red because they're in the red zone, Logan. <laughs> you are leaving me speechless. Little, da little Larry David uh, Hugh action. Your name's Hugh. Hugh. Your name's not you, it's Hugh. As the, as the Maroons have it on about the 18-yard line, Martini from the gun. Takes a snap, hands off to D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose is looking to score and gets run up by a couple of Buccaneers. So just like that, we were in the red zone. Now we're first in goal. As this Buccaneers team is losing its energy, it's losing its momentum. Yeah, they're... Their sales were up to start the game. Now they're, they're what, half mass now? Is that what I, 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 I'm not a big sailor. I don't know the terminology. Big sailor, give some sailor knots there on the feed, Logan. One of the things I'd like to see, you could, I could hope you could see at the broadcast, is the signs that the quarterback is taking. And Philip Martini, the senior from that sideline, interesting to watch. Martini from the gun. Fake hand off to Hambrose, throws it over to the receiver. Olsen, it looks like it is a touchdown again. Matt Quelia, correction, his second touchdown of the day. And not one, not two, not three, but four touchdowns for the Chicago Maroons as it's quickly getting ugly here in Beloit. Yeah, the Bucks don't seem to have an answer defensively for, for this balanced run-pass offense Chicago's putting together here. Looks like a well-oiled machine there. Thomas the train S for those Maroons as the hold is down for Goldman. Goldman right through the uprights. And just like that, 28 nothing there for the Chicago Maroons. Logan, a game like this what makes you wonder how long the Maroons are going to play their starters here. Well, 2.40 left in the half. They, they obviously finish out the half. I think they even go into the third. Or they do the third. Right here might be the most pivotal drive for the Buccaneers. As they score here, cements them having a shot back in this game, but another three and out, another – you know, six and out, I'll call it. Those are my favorite six and outs. You know, you get the first down, and then you get stopped on the next down. Would be almost defeating here early in this game. Yeah. I mean, ideally, the Bucks, you know, they double dip. Ideally. Well, Costanza says you never double dip. Well, 
Costanza wasn't much of a football player, he was he? But Bill Belichick made famous the double dip, for those of you listening. Actually, I think Costanza was for the double dip. It was the other guy who was against Double Dick. He took a chip. <laughs> he flipped it over, didn't he? Yeah, he did. You flip over? I'm not. We're not going to discuss no, that okay. as 28 nothing here. <laughs> 246 left in the second quarter as Golden sets the kick off. It's Patrick and Thorpe deep. The kick by the Maroon. Fitzpatrick looks to have it about the 15-yard line. He's got a little energy. He's got a little run. Fitzpatrick all the way out to the 30-yard line takes a tough hit from the Maroons. Big hit at But Fitzpatrick 30. pops up like it was nothing, and let's see this energy continue for this Buccaneers team. Logan, there's nothing like a good kick return. I love a good kick return. I would used to say, you know, call me out. Call me out when the kick returns are about, because you never know when fireworks are going to happen in, in the kick return. So we got the Bucks lined up at the 30. 240 left in the, in the second quarter. Got a steep mountain to climb here. Maybe Mount Kilimanjaro as Schaefer here is at the 30-yard line to lead this Buccaneers team to score on this drive. Schaefer claps at the line. Silas Say in the slot. Poe behind him. A little quick hand off to Poe. Poe's looking to get outside. He does get outside. And that's the best start we've seen today from the Buccaneers is a little seven-yard run from Poe gets us going. Logan, I do have this to say about halfback draws. They are provocative. They do get the people going. <laughs> That is for sure. So, the Buccaneers, only second play of the gate of the drive. I'd love to say they're driving, as this is one of their longest drives on the day already. <laughs> Bucks come out, shotgun formation, pull to the right of the quarterback, Schaefer. Trips right, say in the slot. Fake handoff to Poe, a little throw over to Say. He's got a nice block, but Say. Once again, he's saying nothing as he's wrapped up there by a bunch of Maroons. Oh, I, dare I say a pallet of Maroons there, Logan. <laughs> a pallet of Maroons. You're full of them today. You're full of the wordplay stuff today. Ah! Got to keep the energy high for this Bucks team. As with a minute and 37 left in the quarter, they need to score. They need something. This third and three could say a lot about what this Bucks team is. Yeah, one timeout. There's not too much urgency to try to score here at the end of the half, is there? It's quite shocking to not see the urgency. They're going into the huddle. No, uh, as I mean, they like to call it, NASCAR going on. Maybe they don't want to stop the clock with incompletions. Interesting. Give Same them slot. Schaefer back in the gun. Schaefer, a three step drop. Looks, has the running back. Poe, but he misses it. And he's lit up there on the play by number 25, Steven Arleano. Arleano, the sophomore linebacker, said, gave Poe a nice hello. So, with one time left in the second quarter, we'll see what the Maroons do here, but it looks like the Bucks are going to punt it right back to them. One ten, two timeouts. It's possible Chicago is going to get another score. You could dare say it, but back there on the return for is Matt Qualia. Qualia, two touchdowns on the day already. Castilla on the punt for the Buccaneers. The first good snap of the day, Castilla. The kick, it's a booming one indeed. All the way from the 30 to the 30. Qualia steps back, and he's got some blocking. There's a flag on the play. There is some laundry. I like the call there. <laughs> a lot of laundry out on the field. Three flags go flying in. They're flying in from everywhere. <laughs> yeah. What's see what the call here indication was a block in the back but no official call has been made yet something a signal has been made to the booth though I think that's a no-brainer Lens Bernadel says take it back Lens still man of energy Logan it is a tough day when your corners have to make most of the tackles here and that's what's been the case for the Buccaneers the Buccaneers corners have made at least half of their tackles today yeah, you want your linebackers making. I guess you could handle a safety leading the tackles because that's what the, you know, that's what they do. They kind of come flying in. But in this in. Buccaneers kind of 3-4, and they play their safeties way back, carving the over the top, being a man coverage. It's hard for a safety to come up and make that play. Yeah. Our safeties being number 22, Jordan Wells, and number 27, Dallas McKinney. Yeah, but you, you don't want your corners making all the tackles. A quick out by the Maroons to 47. 
Chris Song, nice name there. Sing a song there for us, Chris. As the Maroons no huddle offense, trying to get a score with 40 seconds left in this half. Martini from the gun. Another quick out there to Song, but he's not singing this time as it goes incomplete. So 36 seconds left. I think that was the first drop. There's been some incomplete passes, but I'm not sure about drops. You know what I mean? Is that the first one that's not on the quarterback there? No, that still was a still not, a quarterback. Not, that was a very good throw. He was but, missing outside. But being objective, yeah, but it was it was wide open. I appreciate your objectiveness. So we get a third and about five here for the Maroons. Philip Martini in the gun, Gray's to the left. Looks like Qualey in the slot, Olsen on the outside on the left. Little orbit motion there by D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose gets the pass. And he's got blockers. He's getting to the outside. And he's bounced out of, out of bounds around the 40-yard line. That's a first down for the Maroons. Logan, you might as well put third down on the chains already because that's when they're making all of their leeway. Yeah, they can't be stopped on third down. And and the Maroons got two timeouts left, so so they can even run it if they There I said we see a field goal here. Kicker's warming up. He was, he was booting them from... About 40 yards during warm-ups. Pre-game was in. DiMartini looks back. Martini throws it deep. He's got a man. And it's an interception there. Interception made on the play by number eight, Trayvon Colvin. Colvin trying to return it and is taken down. As that's the momentum the Buccaneers need. Down 28 here in the second half in the second quarter. I like to see a knee here from this Buccaneers, if anything, and just take it into the half. Yeah. Yes, I, I don't expect them to take a shot. Two turnovers for us for the Bucks here. This first half, Chicago put it on the deck, put it on the grass rather, two more times. We've covered it twice. So the Bucks take over here from the 35 of their own territory, and it doesn't look like they're going to kneel it. Looks like they're still going to put the pressure on this Maroons. Nana Reyes in the tight end spot, Lorenzo Poe the running back. A little power song fight formation as Schaefer takes it, hands it off to Poe, and Poe, nothing doing once again. Tried that delay handoff again, Logan, and nothing was going. No, it doesn't seem to be working for him. So in this second half, we're going to take a quick break, but when we're back, we're going to do interviews with Beloit freshman Jabari Schofield and TJ Turner on their experience at Beloit. As that seems to be the end of the second half, we'll be there with an interview in a couple seconds, but Logan... We're going to take it to a quick two-minute break to get everything figured out, and we'll be right back.
Good angle, good. Cut to it. <laughs> Welcome back to the Beloit Buccaneers broadcast of the Beloit Buccaneers between the University of Chicago Maroons. I'm here with Jabari Schofield. Jabari, thanks nice for being up you. here. Nice Jabari, you're a freshman at Beloit College, correct? Correct. So just to show the fans out there, why did you choose Beloit College? Uh, I say the main, the main reason I chose Beloit is just a great environment. You know, we ha have a real tight uh, environment that's based on making sure everyone is included in everything. And I'll say we, pro we provide everybody with a lot of resources to make sure they feel like they're right at home and they have the support they need to be successful. So how do you feel at campus so far? How's everything been? Everything, the expectations? I, I say I, I feel good on campus. I feel like everybody wants to see me succeed and do better, especially in a classroom. So that's been a real big thing. That's been meaning a lot to me. Jabari, do you play any sports here at Blake College? I play uh, basketball here. How has the basketball experience been so far? It's been great, especially teammates. I'll say uh, the teammates have been doing a real good job trying to build chemistry. We always try to um, hang out, spend time with each other, tr try to get to know one each other. And all of that just leads to how good we play on the court. So it's all been working hand in hand. If I was a potential student interested in Blake College, what would you say to me looking at it? I'll say just um, 
you you should really consider going here just because of how it's going to help you in your uh, career too, or whichever career you want to go into. Beloit has a lot of opportunities that can help students uh, further their major. It just it helps. It also provides you with a, op- a lot of opportunities to explore other majors mm-hmm. that you might not even know that you're interested in. Mm-hmm. Now, Jabari, getting into you more, what do you want to do here at Beloit College, major wise or going on? Uh, I want to um, major in um, journalism, bro- uh, in sports uh, broadcasting, go mm-hmm. into the kind of career. I want to um, be a sports analyst or a sports broadcaster in the future. And I know that Beloit has a lot of um, opportunities to mm-hmm. um, help me get into that career. So doing this interview right now and being on camera and being in front of you know, probably a decent amount of people, how does it feel? Are you living out your dream right now yeah, or what's going on? It's been good. Actually, it's been very good. And I, it's, uh, this is one of the best opportunities I got to get into type, uh, this uh, type of work. So it's been very good, very exciting. Now, you want to be a sports analyst. Can you hit me with what you're seeing on the field so far? I know it's been brutal. And be kind, what's been going on? Um, I'll just say I just feel we got to uh, match what they're doing. Our offense has to uh, – match the offense. They're throwing a lot of long passes. We're um, not really getting much out of, out of the running game, so we got to um, explore where we can get uh, more into a deep field play. Mm. I'm a man of comparisons. I consider Nano and Mike Tolbert, uh, Nano Reyes, our running back. I consider Lorenzo Poe, our running back, um, Jamal Charles type. Jabari, what do you consider yourself? What's your analyst comp? Are you a Stephen A? Are you a Nick Wright? I'm definitely a Stephen You're a, a. a Stephen a. a. So as this interview concludes, you have any hot takes for us before we switch on to another freshman or no? Um... Go Bucks, that's it. Go Bucks. Go Jabari, Bucks. thank you so much. I'd like thank to send you, you TJ, you. man. And just a, another shout out to Jonathan Kelly and everyone out here for letting us do this. And right now we're bringing in freshman TJ Turner. TJ, welcome What's to the broadcast. On, JT? Nothing, man. I'm just living life. How are you? Oh, yeah, having fun. Living so the dream. TJ, the fans at home, let, let us know a little bit about you. What year are you? Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Richmond, Illinois, which is uh, right out, right on the Illinois side of where Lake Geneva's at. Mm-hmm. You know where that is? 100%. I think everyone knows where that's at. TJ, what brought you to Beloit? Uh, mostly that they had my major in media studies, and I want to study sports media, mm-hmm. and uh, the basketball program, mo- mainly Coach Hens. Coach Hens. So being on campus for almost a month now, probably a little longer than a month, What's your experience been so far? I, I know I'm asking you similar questions, Jabari, but I think everyone at Beloit's experience is different. How's your experience been? Oh, I feel like it's been great. It's been good that all the professors seem very like personalized and they're like willing to help you out with everything, whether it be like your dorm or classes or anything you need. And then everybody like at the campus has always has been nice the whole mm-hmm. time and been very helpful, and everybody's just been nice and welcoming. For the prospective students and the families at home watching this, what's your favorite class you've taken so far? Uh, my favorite class has probably been uh, econ Ooh. With, uh, with Professor Bob, Bob Elder. Bob Elder. Yes. He is a famous <laughs> man around the Beloit College campus. Yes. So, TJ, continuing so on the interview, you said you want to do a broadcast, correct? Yes. So I'm going to ask the same question, Jabari. What's it like being in the booth right now? What's it like, you know, being in front of a live camera, live audience? It's, it's, it's actually, it's been, it's been fun. It's nice listening to you and being able to like learn and see what it's like to be up here in the booth and being in here myself doing the camera. It's an honor to say you're learning from me first <laughs> off to everyone back home. You're not as nervous as your bar. You seem pretty uh, camera camera savvy. Yeah, isn't I, I guess. I've done, done like one interview in my life. Oh, one interview? You weren't <laughs> a big uh, star in high school? Uh, no, I got interviewed about uh, football, actually. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. So I asked Jabari, I'll ask you the same question. What's your analyst comp? Are you Colin Coward? <laughs> are you Joy Taylor? Who are you in that world? Are you on your own um, person? or? I suppose more of a, like, Stan Van Gundy. Stan Van Gundy. Well, yes. uh, he actually, I th- believe he coached at Wisconsin oh. and coached our former basketball coach, uh, Coach uh, Brian Brainy. When I was on my visit, that was his whole thing. I was coached <laughs> by NBA legend Stan Van Gundy before he went to the NBA. That was back in those Wisconsin days when they weren't good. So before we get a little analyze and breaking down, to a prospective student who wants to come here, not to play sports, but just to be a student, what would you say? I would say it's definitely a good place to be if you want to be more, like, individualized and learn, like, be able to be involved with your teacher and be in more small class sizes. Mm-hmm. It's nice to be able to be, like, connected with everyone mm-hmm. and not be in, like, big lectures where you don't even know who your classmates are. Uh-huh. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now. It's said you want to be an analyst, you want to be in broadcast. What do you see so far from this Beloit team and this UChicago team? Uh... I have a background in football, so it's been uh, good to like watch them and analyze how they've been doing. It feels like uh, the defense has been it's been on and off. They've yes. had a couple turnovers. They've gotten the ball a few times, but uh, the offense seems to be struggling a little bit. They can't really get the running game going at all, which I feel like if they get the running game going, they'd be able to open up the passes yeah. and be able to open up the offense a little bit. 
one of my favorite things about doing this prof uh, not profession, doing this job on campus, doing this, is when you listen to some of those guys on TV and they're doing the play-by-play, -play, you're like, that guy knows nothing about the game. <laughs> and now I'm in this position where it's like I've played college basketball, I've played, you know, high school football, and it's like, I'm like, wow, do I really know as much as that guy? Does he know more than me? TJ, it's been an honor to have you. Thanks Thank for being you. on the show. Thank you. Honored to be here. And we'll be right back in about five minutes with the second half of the Beloit Buccaneers with the University of Chicago Maroons.
And we're back here with some second half college football division three. A little time action for you. It's uh, 224 here on this beautiful Saturday, September 28th. So quick shout out to my parents listening as their happy anniversary to them. Big shout out to Jody and Steve. But as we return here to the second half, the Bucks are gonna get the ball first and are gonna look to capitalize and score. To quote the famous Matt Hasselback, we want the ball and we're gonna score. We want the ball and we're gonna score. Al Hopefully outcomes are different. Yes. Yeah, so Hopefully outcomes are different. Packer Hall of Famer, not NFL Hall of Famer. Al Harris ended up pick sixing him a couple plays later. But we do need a score. We do need something here to get this Buccaneers team going. And we're off here as the Maroons kicked it off there. It looks like Thorpe. Thorpe on the return. Thorpe kind of jogging him, kicks it up, and he gets absolutely I, tackled by the Maroon there. So Looks like, looks like Fitzpatrick miss, missed the block there in that return. Five seconds down already, and the momentum is already absolutely killed there for the Buccaneers. So we're going to start their possession, and it looks like about the 20-yard line. Correction, 19. And I think the keys of the second half are exactly, Logan, what we talked to those two incoming freshmen about, is starting that offense early, getting the run game going, and getting some confidence in the freshman quarterback, Jacob Schaefer. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you just want to have positive plays. I don't know if, um, you know, you obviously don't want to try to do too much. Mm -hmm. But maybe you do experiment a little bit. As Schaefer takes it from the gun and hands it off there to Silas Say, and we see basically what we've seen all day stopped at the line of scrimmage, making it second and about 11 there for the Buccaneers. So second 11 here for the Buccaneers. Low in a passing down here on second down? I think so. I mean, you can always pass. Bucc I'm in favor of the pass. The forward pass, the greatest invention in sports. Back in 1913, I believe there, Logan, something around then. Just kidding, the effect's a little off. As we go <laughs> second about 13 here, two receivers set out to the left, Hippolyte in the slot. Schaefer from the gun. Takes the snap and hands off to Say, quick laundry. Say bounces outside, he's on that right side. Looks like he's got a first down, but <coughs> looks like there's a little holding there on the play. Drive killers holds are. Logan, the famous saying, there's holding on every play, it's just not called. Yeah. <laughs> The over-under set on that for the day was at three. So saying that classic line that it's holding every play. Official call is false start, actually, instead of holding. Oh. So negate that holding call as the Buccaneers are moving backwards. Yeah, not the way you want to start the second half. Second and uh, about a walk to the celeb away for the Buccaneers. Come out one receiver, Jose Guillen on the far side left, hip light in the slot. Looks like 86, Isaac Wellman, the freshman on the right outside, say in the backfield. Schaefer claps the line together. The snap to Schaefer. Looks like a handoff to Say. Say, he's got a little bit of room, he's got a little bit of daylight, but a nice play there made by the Chicago linebacker, number 48 there, being on the play, Aiden Capolino. Logan, third and long, quickly, as the minute's already been gone in this half. Yeah, I think I think they you run it. I mean, this deep, you kind of want all the yards you can get mm -hmm. to uh, to get that punt further downfield. What's the magic word or the magic conch or the the magic anything to get this Buccaneers offense unlocked? They've only scored 14 points on the year. So we're gonna we're gonna see a touchdown this half though. Logan's calling it as the Bucks come out. Trips left. Schaefer in the backfield with Poe and hands it off to Poe. Poe looking around, he's got two pulling guards and he gets a decent run, might be on the back of the line of scrimmage as Guillen and the cornerback fight a little bit, but the Buccaneers are three and out once again. That brings on punter Alonzo Castilla on the day. Castilla's average today, I looked at stats, Logan, about 45 yards on his punts today. 35? 40. 45? Yes. Those are booming. 
They're indeed booming as Castillo looks to keep that average up. And back returning there for the Maroons is number 19, Matt Quelia. Quelia been a killer in the phone on the side of those Buccaneers. Castillo takes a snap. First perfect one all day, and it's up. And it's another booming as Quelia takes from the 50, stays in bounds, but cannot tightrope out of danger as the Maroons will take over on their own 48. That was high up in the air. One thing you got to give Beloit Logan is they may have the best special teams in the conference. Best punter for sure, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yes, I, w I would say he's up there. It's an early call as the Maroons look to march once again to the end zone and leading them is senior Philip Martini. We'll see how the Maroons open their, open their second half. Martini takes a snap, hands off to Ambrose. The Ambrose tries to get to the outside, but is met by a Beloit defender in number 24, E.K. Davis. E.K., the six-foot freshman from Charleston, Missouri, forcing the strong running back, the Ambrose, out of bounds. The clock continues to run as it's a second and long for these Maroons. Martini in the gun. Two receivers split up to the right. Tight end there, two. Receiver to the left. Quick action there to Olsen. Olsen gets it, shakes and bakes, but nothing going as Thorpe is right there in a swarm there by number 33, Josh Shapiro. Good open field tackle there by number nine for the Bucks. Thorpe. Gavin Thorpe. He's had a busy day. It's third down, Logan, and this is the Maroons down all day. If they have not failed a conversion yes, today. Yes, we'll see if they can keep it up. Maybe they need to change that sound they play on third <laughs> downs there, Logan. Yeah. See if the Bucks can come up with something here. Martini from the gun, hands it off to Ambrose. DeAmbrose tries to break to the outside. Thorpe misses the tackle. DeAmbrose breaks two more and is dragged out of bounds by number 99. But that is, once again, a conversion there for the University of Chicago Maroons as they are driving once again. Get in the car. Get your shoes ready because they're going for a run here. And we're making it their fifth touchdown of the day. Martini hands it off to D'Ambrose. D'Ambrose is met by a couple of Buccaneers, but still a gain of three on the play. Logan, one of those things that you talk about as a coach is if you get three yards on each run, you're looking in great position every drive. 3.4. It's all you need is 3.4 yards a play if you're going to use all four. It's, I think it's... I think it's 3.4 yards. I believe play. it is. It looked like uh, when I looked at the stats quick because we're behind there on the live stream, I averaged about four or five yards per play there for the Maroons. Martini from the shotgun. Ooh, into the game is Reese. CBL is shaking and baking, but nothing's quaking as there is some laundry on the field. Reese from Marito Logan going nowhere. And a holding is called. Looks like the Buccaneers will take the penalty, making a second and long. Hey, what do they say about holding? Holding happens on every play there, Logan. It's just every when they want to call it. Let's watch it. We should experiment. We should watch the linemen for one drive, see how many times there's holding. Linemen are not the most fun part to watch, but they are the most crucial part of the game. A good line sets you apart. As Mantini sets Logan in motion. Logan, oh, not Logan, correction. Little running back pass there as into the game is entered as newly as Kyle James, the 5'8 freshman from Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, St. Rita High School specifically, gets him back to about the line of scrimmage. Brings up a third and long here for the Maroons. And to the game for the Maroons is Reese Marita Logan at tailback. Martini in the gun. Olsen split out wide left. Elliot Gray split out wide right. Little power formation as the quarterback is behind the running back. The snap. Martini looks left. Martini likes his Martini shaking that oh stirred no. and throws it deep to Elliot Gray. He's got a man, but he overthrew him. A little too strong there if you catch my whiff there, Logan. Yeah, and Martin. for the first time of the game, the Bloit Buccaneers have stopped the Maroons on third down. Yeah, well, Martini missed that throw again. That's that's a handful of throws now Martini's missed. 
Are they going for it here on fourth? Fourth and long. I saw the punter warming up during halftime, but yet we still have not seen him today. You know, this is a funky spot to punt. You're at your own. You're at their 37, it looks like. But it's fourth and long. Yeah. Because how good is a pooch punt? Indeed, correction. As Martini is going to do a Pat PA rollout, looking for Elliot Grays. And he finds, oh, he overthrew him again, Logan. That looked like a throwaway, honestly, more than anything. But the Bucks finally sees a ship, sees a possession. But they got, and they're going to yeah. look to march to score. Got off the field. I'd like to see the offense stay on for extended minutes, give their defense a break. Logan, the one thing we've seen out of the Maroons today that has not been good, you might say, may be the quarterback play on deep throws. Yes. I was expecting more accuracy from Martini given his his appearance. His appearance? He, his looks, he looks like a quarterback. He acts like a quarterback. The 6'3 senior. Senior, too, yeah. Sp I expected him to make those throws. But, you know, som sometimes you have an off day. Bucks from the shotgun. Two receivers split out left. Hip light to tight end on the left side. All right, as a freshman, as Schaefer hands it off to Lorenzo Poe. Poe's got a little bit of room, but is stuffed for a gain of about one. We'll see if they even give him that. Making it another second and long. Logan, I don't know who I got to talk to, but I want to see Nano Reyes on those first down runs, those halfback delays, yes. those screens. Yes, and like we talked about, he's a big body. He's going he's gonna to take two guys to bring him down. We have... A plethora of running backs who are super versatile, and those are your second down and third down running backs. On that first down, the good old classic Adrian Peterson, you know, hand off to the right side and just let him do his thing. Yeah, let him get eight yards. Yes. As we get to a second and nine, Schaefer in the gun, Poe in front of him, trips to the right, gain on the farthest most receiver. Looks left, but that's a sack in the backfield for number 44. George Coyle, Coyle, the linebacker, the senior, talked about him early in the day from Alpharetta, Georgia. And as it looked like something was brewing, they turned off the kettle in the coffee shop as it's third and long. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was a blitz or a missed block, but he came in, came in untouched to make that play. I might even say that Schaefer was lost in the play. Well, it looked like it was, it looked like kind of this one earlier at the end of the half. It was kind of a hitch one way, then looked the other. Yeah, or there was a miscommunication, but it looked like it was look one way, throw the other, and then that, that defender came untouched to get to Schaefer in the back, backfield. Schaefer in the gun, Casado in the slap, Silas say, and the running back throws out to Hippolyte. Hippolyte, the big body, breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, but gets only back to the line of scrimmage. Logan, we talked about earlier, and we talked a lot about things, but Hippolyte being that safety blank is where we need to go on first and second down. As that boy is a big body, he's a senior, he's a leader. He's someone we need to get the ball to. But that he brings can up. Break tackles. It's hard to bring down, he's a big body. So Alonzo Castilla out here for it seems like the hundredth time today will punt. The average still intact. Let's see if he can keep it up. Back for the Maroons. I'm sure you know Matt Quaglia. Quaglia. As it's a short punt, it rolls a little bit. Quaglia picks it up, breaks one tackle. He's going backwards, but his play is made by number 13. Jose Guillen, the receiver, being the gunner on the punt, makes a tackle. A love a guy who can go both ways. So that brings up about first and 10 for the Maroons on their own. 26. Let's see if the Buccaneers defense can make another crucial stop. Logan, being from Bigfoot High School and winning many games by blow up, what would you guys do in this scenario with your offense? Are you testing out things here? Or are you still putting the pedal to the metal on this Buccaneers team? Um, I think we're chewing up clock. Well, maybe not at this point to where you're waiting for the ref to count down. But you're, you're doing more runs. As we see the fourth running back of the day, Marcelo Alanis, the running back, the freshman of Austin, Texas, makes the run. This is when you look over for the play and your coach gives you the handoff sign in those RPOs. As a quarterback, are you feeling like your day is done? You've done, it all, you've done enough? Or how are you feeling now? Well, you're happy you get a win. If you played bad, 
Oh, well, you played good. You're happy about the win on top of your individual performance. A win would put the Maroons at 3-0. and Looks like a whistle, but there's no whistle. A run just to the left side there for Big the Maroons. Big pop there. 27 on the run. Harry, Harry Partridge, it looks like. Mark Flores. Correction, 23 there. Marcelo Alanis again. Maroons come to the line on third and about two. Two receivers split up the right. Tight end and receiver on the left. A handoff once again. Oh, he get, takes a hit from the Buccaneer and the quarterback pushed him forward. On the play was 36, Aiden Deal. The Beloit Turner alum went for the big hit and missed Logan. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that would have been a good play. He came through, read it, burst through, and uh, made a big hit, but just couldn't bring him down. It was great to see. Honestly, it was quite comical to see quarterback Martini shake it up a little bit and push his running back to the first <laughs> down. That's dedication to the team right there. As we see an injured Beloiter shaken up on the play. Mark Flores. Mark Flores, a sophomore, gets up under his own power and walks off. But the Maroons, once again, on third down, just killing us. So we resume action after that injury. First and 10 on the 43 on the Maroons' own side. Split out right for the Maroons is 81, Elliot Gray's and 19. Matt Qualia. Olsen split out to the left. Another running back comes from the game for the Maroons. A little play action there by Martini. Martini's looking deep. He's got a man wide open, and he out throws him once again. His sixth missed throw deep on the day, Logan. Yeah, he had some pressure. Had some pressure on that throw too, but still I think a, a completable pass. Put a little air under that, a little loft under that, and yeah. he is gone. The running back in the game for the Maroons is number 25, the freshman we just talked about, Kyle James. Quite frankly, if I'm the quarterback's coach for the Maroons, I'm disappointed in Martini. They've got about three scores on the board. They should have more. Mm -hmm. But this blocks boy defense stands tall here in this third quarter with six minutes left. Martini drops back in the pocket, drops off to his running back, who looks to just have misplayed it there. As we just talked about, Kyle James, the inserted freshman running back, missed the pass, which makes it a third and 10 for the Maroons. Logan, not to get into the future or anything, but if they don't get this third down here, do you think they're going for it once again on fourth? Um, no. No, I think they'll punt it if they don't. I bet if they get eight yards, they may go for it. If so they get two or three. We'll Martini in the gun. Steps up, makes a throw to a wide open Qualia. Qualia makes a juke and breaks it. Talc is tackle made by 27, Dallas McKinney. But that's moving the chains on third down once again for those Chicago Maroons. Yeah, that's kind of been the story of the day here, hasn't it? The third down conversion for the Maroons. This Bucks defense just unable to, to get that some third down stops. That has been the story indeed. And this Bucks defense isn't bad. This University of Chicago Maroons team is just a well-oiled machine as Cal James takes it, makes a break, and looks to explode. Stays on his feet, is still running. It's going to take the entire Bucks defense to take him down as he rumbles, stumbles, bumbles, and finally tumbles down at the 20-yard line. Listen to this crowd here. Apparently it might be Kyle James's birthday there. As a Beloit is injured, it'll give the Duck Buccaneers defense a little time to sit there and ponder what moves they can make to stifle this solid Maroons offense. Logan. JT. It's still a beautiful day here. The Buccaneers are still a young learning team. I believe looking at the time of possession, the Maroons had it for over 75% of the game. Time of possession has been a killer for the Buccaneers. There's not much you can do when the offense goes three and out every time, Logue. Yeah, that's a, it's, it's tough when your defense is always out there. Like, yeah, 75% of the time, 
the defenses out there. They, you know, they, they just get tired and, and worn out. As an injured player was the senior Josh Shapiro. Shapiro, a native of El Paso, Texas, walks off under his own power and looks to be okay. So, back to the gridiron we go with the Maroons on the Beloit Buccaneer 20. And they're still in that shotgun. Kyle James on his birthday, staying in the game. Two receivers set out to the right, Olsen to the left. Martini takes the snap, takes it himself, keeps it over to Olsen. Olsen, wow, there's a flag on the play. Olsen made a great catch there. Yeah, this might be that illegal man downfield that I was talking about earlier. And that RPO with that those RPOs. Because the linemen are, I, are told to block as if it's a run. So they, you know, they get their first level, then move up to the second level. That is indeed an illegal man downfield, and that is something that's not on the line. It's on the quarterback play of Philip Martini, the senior. Yeah. That's a tough play there for Martini there. It, it is, is tough. It, it was a quick tough. hitter, it seemed like. Yeah. And I, I, I can't remember if it's the ball has to be released or caught before, like, the three. It's probably released. I would concur. As we're here in the shotgun, Martini in the shotgun, James in the backfield. Quick handoff to James. James has got some speed burst to the outside. Which makes a little juke, but is brought down by 27. Safety, Dallas McKinney. That's what you like to see. The safety's coming up and making those plays, Logan. Yeah, he tried to stretch it outside. Got, got the penalty yardage back, but right back to the initial line of scrimmage. Dallas McKinney gave me some Miles Sanders for the Eagles vibes here coming into the game. Or correction, uh, Kyle James. So, we pick up here second and 10. Maroon's still on there, 20 receivers set up on both sides. Martini takes the snap, he's looking left. He's got a man, it's caught, and that looks to be another touchdown for the Maroons. As number 19, Matt Qualia makes a touchdown, came out of the slot. Just a quick little post route, and it is now 34-0, Chicago Maroons. Logan, you take that injury time out there, and I, you stop him on first down. Just still not ready for that quick hitter RPO. Yeah, those, those plays are set up to always make the defense wrong. Because he's reading a linebacker or a corner or whoever he's told to, and if he, if he, if he comes up, the quarterback hands it off. Goldman. As good yeah. as gold through the upright slow. And it might be something new with that man coverage that the Beloit lives and dies by. Yeah, that seems to be causing issues because these athletes for the Chicago receivers are, are pretty pretty solid athletes. I would say they're above average athletes in D. Yeah, Logan. And, it's, and it's so hard to cover man to man in, in anything because you're already at a disadvantage because you don't know what they're going to do and the offense knows what they're going to do. It's a tough task to ask of your linebackers, though, to be in coverage as well. Yes. That's yes. what makes that RPO so deadly is they bite on that run, that man's wide open. But that man's already wide open in general, so. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll see some adjustments. Maybe we won't. But UC is up 35-0 on your Beloit Buccaneers. It's got to be a great day to be the uh, UC punter there. As you say, you're on the team and have not came out once. You're a starter on the football team. Great resume builder there. Certainly, certainly going on the resume. So, Goldman on the kick here. Goodman kicks it deep over to Thorpe. Looks like it's going to go into the end zone as Thorpe looked to be looking for it to go out of bounds and get that classic 40-yard flag, but... The Buccaneers take over on their own 25. Looking to get that goose egg off the scoreboard. So with four minutes and 13 seconds left here in the third quarter, the Buccaneers take over on their own 25-yard line. Schaefer in the gun, takes the snap, three-step drop, looking around. He's got no one. He's got a man in front of him, and there's more flags on the play.
Preliminary indication is holding, and right as I say that, on cue, it's called. It's declined. It's so second and about. Logan, second about 20? Uh, 15. 15. They declined because they got a sack. So half the yardage. Plus a down. Probably the right decision. So in a second and 15, the Boyd Buccaneers come out looking to bring any magic, little Harry Potter action here. Says Patrick's still with no targets. A pitch out there to say, say fumbles it, and Fitzpatrick fumbles it, and the ball, it looks like the Chicago Maroons stumble upon it, and it looks like it's gonna be first and 10 for the Maroons of Chicago. That might have been Fitzpatrick, first touch of the game there if you would recover that fumble. <laughs> yeah, right on cue, he's kind of in the middle of that. He didn't, he didn't fumble it, but right in the middle of the action there on that play. Have we seen any targets to anyone besides Stanley Hippolyte? We haven't seen any targets to Guillen or Fitzpatrick on the outside. Yeah, for sure not Fitzpatrick. Yeah, I wonder what his numbers are on the day. And it looks like the backup, Wesley Gow, is coming in. The 6'2 junior looking to lead this Maroons team to the score. A little confusion going on as they go through signs. Gal from the gun. Hands off to Kyle James. Buccaneers missed their tackles as on the K was Marcelo Alanis, the running back, the freshman. Logan, it looks like Philip Martini's day is done here in the third quarter. It looks like Nick D'Ambrose's day is done here in the third quarter. Yeah, both of them are not carrying their helmets. So there's, there's a sign that they're done. We'll see how involved Martini is with this backup. That was always what coach said when uh, when I got taken. I was like, you still got to be in engaged and involved. It's a big thing there with this team. Big thing right now for the Buccaneers is pride, as on the carry was Alanis, which is being a bloiter and being proud to be a buck and being proud to play in that football field. Right now, I think many of us would kill to put on that jersey one more time. So just the honor is to put on that jersey. We'll see if they play for it here, Logan. Oh, yeah. See if 19 Genesis Solomon can make a play here. He's been quiet all day. So, Gao on the third down takes a snap. And it looks like it's snuffed out, but Alanis breaks it. Two tackles and jits into the end zone for another UC touchdown, making the game 41 to nothing in favor of UC. I think right now for the Bloit faithful, we're just hoping to keep under 60, Logan. Can I have a repay of two years ago? Yeah, they put, and they put up 66 last week on IC. Right now we're just trying to prove that we are out here to play and we're better than IC. And, and UC is, as we've talked about, one of the better teams in this United States of football. United States of football here. <laughs> D3 cracked today. Top 50. So with 240, Goodman the snap. And if it's not bad, it's good, as it's 42 nothing. you see over the Blake College Buccaneers. We'll be back here with the kickoff. It looks for A.J. Fitzpatrick and Gavin Thorpe to get something going here for these Buccaneers. So after a quick break there, with 2.40 left here in the third quarter, Goodman on his, I believe Logan, this is his seventh kick of the day. We're going to give you a little college football update. Cincinnati is up 38-24 on Indiana. Michigan State is up 38-17 on the 24th ranked Miami uh, Ducks. Purdue is down 3-10 to Notre Dame as Goodman kicks off. Fitzpatrick on the return. Looking to shake something up, runs in his own man. It bounces the outside, but is met by a maroon. Looks like a freshman on the play. <laughs> on the tackle was number eight, 
Colin Gillespie, the quarterback, making the tackle. The sophomore from Aurora doing it all there for the Maroons. Continuing on with that college football scoreboard update, Alabama's up 7-0 on Florida. And shout out to the Eyeshot family as Hawkeyes Nation is just starting playing Kent State here in the first. And Clemson is also playing Georgia Tech. That game started. Oklahoma beat Nebraska 23-15. West Virginia upset Virginia Tech. And that's all the games we have here. As Schaefer takes it from the gun. Takes the three step drops looking left. Drops it down to Silas Say. I hope they give him the catch on it. He looked to catch with the ground. They'll give it to him. That looked clean. That looked like a clean catch. Logan, from up in the box. Up in the box, I did think it was clean as well. That's finally something we want to see. A first down, little dump off, get some momentum going instead of trying to hit the home run or trying to run into that wall of maroons. Yeah, you can dink and dunk as much as you can to get some positive yardage. Just drive in the quarter with some, some momentum. Maybe get to midfield. A wall of maroons or a painting of maroons? I don't know what's better. As Schaefer has trips right. Drops back three steps. He's got a man, he but he's got a rush. He throws it up over to 29, Brian Casado, but that is incomplete. Bringing up a quick third down and seven for your Beloit Buccaneers with a minute 54 left in the quarter. Logan, not to bring attention away from the game, but I'm really feeling like that Florida team has a chance against that Alabama team. Do you? It's already 7 nothing, and there's nine minutes left yeah. of the first. Happen. <laughs> it's it's how I said earlier. It's how I said in my article. Anything can happen in college football when you have a poignant offense, and this ah. Buccaneers team has it. As Schaefer takes the snap, trips right, three-step drop, pressure all around, and makes a pass out to 83. His first catch on the day is. I believe that's Brady Card. I really, 83. I believe so. It is Brady Card. Is that's his first day mentioned? And I was hoping the Buccaneers would go for it here on a fourth and five, but they're going to bring out Alonzo Castillas once again. Back seat is a new player there for the Maroons. 82, Gabe Solis, the junior, listed at 5'11", 165. In for Matt Qualia. Castilla, a big snap. Runs around. He's gonna. Get, it looks like he might take it himself. He gets the punt off, and oh, and it hits a Buck player on the punt. Maybe the most exciting play on the day as Cruz Vargas actually ran into that ball, Logan. You know those snaps have been high all day. It's been causing it's been causing mayhem back there for poor Alonzo. I was hoping he'd run that one there, Logan. I got excited. <laughs> he might have had it. I think he's glad he punted it. I think he is as well because he would have taken a boomstick hit yes. from one of those maroons. And you always feel for those punters and kickers when they run and then they just get lit up. I know, I know exactly. What, I see that highlight in my head. Oh I, don't, I think yeah. it's the LSU you guy just right now. You kind of cringe. And you're like, oh. Uh, so Wesley Gao takes over once again for the maroons on their own 40-yard line. The snap. Hands it off to Kyle James on his birthday. He's going for a first down. Looks like about a 13-yard run there for the Maroons. As that clock does stop after a college football first down, the Buccaneers seem to be grasping for air there, Logan. Yeah, and like, yeah, they just, this defense have been on the field so long for, for the Bucks. It looks like the receivers have been subbed out as well, too. Some meaningful reps for backups trying to make a name for themselves. A couple years ago is when Monty Ball made a name for himself for the Badgers as Gao takes it himself, breaks two tackles, runs over Dallas McKinney, getting the outside, is stumbling. He's running the outside, he's got a blocker, but it looks like 97, oh, he jukes him as well. As it took number 27, Dallas McKinney, to get up from that broken tackle and get him all the way back there at the one yard line. Gao looking like Big Ben running down the sidelines. <laughs> Big quarterback run. We got an injured Beloit. It's like that's Aiden Deal. Deal. Honest, just, just a little tired as 15 seconds here are left in this third quarter. Let's see if they run the clock when it starts. But the bleeding is on this Buccaneers. Logan, this is a deep gash, a deep wound. I don't know how you fix this one. Yeah, it's, it's, this last quarter here, you just want to focus on doing the right things, you know, doing the little things right. Looks like you'd need a 
you know, firing off the, the snap, mm -hmm. great positioning and, and stuff like that. Not even Booby Miles could save the Buccaneers from a 42 nothing Not even Booby Miles. As Deal, as you like to see, walks off on his own power. But the Maroons are still right there putting their putting their planks on our ship. How they're storming it. Yeah, they're th they're taking it over. <laughs> the storm is a brewing as Gao is leading his Maroons out there, painting his own picture Bob Ross style. In that shotgun. So, Gal from the gun once again. Two receivers to the right. Hands off to James. James breaks a tackle. Takes a hit from Dallas McKinney, but he does score with one second left in the third quarter. <laughs> Making it 48 nothing. You see over Big your Boy College Buccaneers. Line. Logan, you said the score's coming this quarter, this half. When are we going to see that? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We've seen sparks. Then we see sparks this quarter of some, some big plays or bigger plays mm -hmm. for the Bucks offense. And maybe with the second unit in for Chicago, Beloit can get some momentum. As Will Goodman p looks to take the PAT. Logan, I don't know if you listen to this ruckus crowd there. The Chicago fans are still wild. It is Kyle James' birthday. Yeah, he's got a he's got a handful of fans down behind us yeah. or below us. As as they say it again, her, his mom gives a nice shout out to Kyle James. This is awesome, Logan. It's hard to play on your birthday. It's one of the most pressure filled things out there. It is. It is. Not to talk about my own, you know, quarterback career in middle school, but never <laughs> had a good game on my birthday. Actually, concussed on my birthday in middle school. As we get a personal foul, but I think there's more pressure playing on your birthday than in a big game. I'd rather play in a big game than play on really? my birthday. Yes. I don't know if that's a hot take or. I've had baseball games on my birthday. Well, but that's, a, that's a baseball game. You can go 0 for 3, and it's like, ah, you still played well because, you know, you took 20 pitches or something like that. <laughs> but in football, when you're the quarterback and you throw, like, two picks or on your birthday, you'll remember that for the rest of your it's life. I, I guess I had a summer birthday, so I never really had anything too exciting. On my well, birthday. Just a shout out to Kyle James. Happy birthday to him. The freshman from Chicago, Illinois. Really shouting out. Logan, but that is one of my core memories is being at that Monty ball game against Austin P when he had four touchdowns. He came in for, I believe, it was Melvin Gordon and just shined, which led to him, you know, getting a shot in the NFL eventually. Yeah. he Melvin Gordon came in for Monty Ball. No, no, no. Monty Ball came in for Monty. Yes. Really? Or who was the running back there then? Might have, it wasn't John Clay. It might have been uh, James White, actually. Okay. As Goodman kicks it. Well, because I think Monty Ball was before. As it's just short of the field goal, which does not take us into the fourth quarter yet with one second still left on the clock in this third quarter. Let's see what the Buccaneers can do. Being a, being a Hawks fan, Logan, I wouldn't expect you to know any of that Badger. No. I do not keep up with the Badgers. Athletics. So if you're from the Illinois Chicago area and you you know UC isn't your football team, who's your football team? Is it Illinois? Northwestern. Oh, it is Northwestern. It's back. Don't you hear Northwestern and Chicago is the Chicago's football team? All right, Mike Greenberg's always on him. A little motion there from Casado. Casado trying to get to the outside. But a great swarm there by the College Maroons take us into the fourth quarter. So at the end of three, 49 nothing, University of Chicago Maroons over the Beloit Buccaneers. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back with you.
So we're back here in the fourth quarter, a 49 nothing game. Not anything close, but still interesting to see how this young Bucks team comes out. And for those of you dedicated listeners, it was a, it was indeed John Clay who we came in for. As Monty Ball became a superstar after that game, it was a mix of John Clay, Monty Ball, and James White. As Schaefer's in the shotgun, he's playing five. Pass, he's got Nano Reyes open. He gets it to Reyes. Nano stopped. He got a penalty. It looks like it's going to be roughing the passer. You know, some of those plays can be just as tough as the uh, those targeting ones because how are you going to tell a defensive player to, you know, not tackle the quarterback? And not to be a homer in any way, I did not think that looked like you – know, the hit was keyed and keyed as he was throwing it. Maybe it was the way he went down with it. Oh! As it was indeed a roughing the passer call as that, you know, Learning the referee signs at home, that classic is roughing the passer. They declined the holding by the Maroons, but might have been the biggest game of the day for the Buccaneers there is that penalty. It's up there, that's for sure. As it is a 15-yarder, and now the Buccaneers might have their first crack at getting in to the Maroons' side of the field. And this is where they score, I'm telling you. It's coming. Oh, we're going to watch it right here, this drive. Another quarterback going to be warming up for New Chicago. So we get here on first and 10. Looks about the 43-yard line. MJ Smith-Suk enters the game. Shaver from the gun. Two receivers right, one left. Nano in the tight end spot. MJ Smith has it, and he runs right into defensive lineman for the Chicago Maroons. As MJ had a head of steam, but just the 5-6 five, five, MJ Smith-Suk. Not uh, running over the six foot one uh, defensive lineman there for the Maroons. MJ Smith Duke might have a Monte Ball moment here. Still on him. As Schaefer brings his men to the line. 86 to his left, 86 Wellman. Two shooters to the right. Another handoff to MJ Smith Duke, but he's just met by two Maroons. And honestly, it didn't look like anyone blocked as Beloit's starting to get a little into it with the Maroons there. Getting a little chirpy here at the end of the game. You love to see your linemen sticking up for your running back. Warming up right in front of him is freshman quarterback number 26, Teddy Golden, 6'2", from Burnsville, New Jersey, at Bernard High. A Jersey kid at UT. Good for him. Jersey. So after our biggest day game of the day, getting 15 yards on a penalty, Bucks have gone nowhere. A long third and 10 here for Jacob Schaefer. MJ Smith Duke to tailback. Schaefer, two step drop. Looks like a screen, but MJ is nailed in the back. Let's see if he gets up. He gets up right away as on the coverage was number 20, AJ Marquette. The receiver coming, correct, was Josh Godfrey. As the linebacker, the senior out of New York, New York, makes the play. Logan, not a fan of having multiple guys with the same number. No, it's, it's tough in college. And Alonzo Castillo is out here for his 200th punt of the game, <laughs> setting a new school record. Will punt to the Maroons and number 83. Waiting for a name on that as Castillo punts it. It's a booming punt and a fair catch there. Correct, 82 there on the play. Gabe Solis, the junior. So with 13 minutes left here in the final quarter of play, the Maroons take over. Looks like Dow will still be the quarterback, Logan. As a starter, Philip Martini puts his backwards hat on and gets ready to help his underclass with the red cap, the Tony Romo, Mark Sanchez cap. It's my favorite part of the game is when Tony Romo's on the sidelines with that backwards hat talking to his teammates. Not a big Cowboys fan I am, but just you got to love Tony and the, the, the effort, the hustle, the heart. And we have the fifth running back entering the game for the Maroons. It looks like number nine, Jake Lau. Lau trying to break to the outside, breaks a tackle. Gets about four yards. The ball might have popped loose, but labeled down. Lau, the junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia, Ocean Lake High School alum. Trying to run this clock out for the Maroons. Maroons having some fun on the sidelines as Gao gets the call. Two receivers split out right, one to the left. Gao hands.
hands it off there to Lau, the Kyle to Lau combo. How about that? As they make their way up to about a third and about one for the Maroons. As the Chang Gang gets the signal, that's a first and ten for the Maroons. And we have yet another running back checking into the game. As it looks like Greg Asar, the junior running back from Worcester State, Massachusetts, coming into the game. It's really interesting to see the stats after the game, see the running back. The run there for the newly inserted running back is a first down as the Bucks still cannot contain this new Chicago team. As I might say, the second unit might be better than the first unit in this game. Yes, the second unit is marching down just as easily. It's looking like the Grinnell basketball team with all these subs on the yeah. field and still killing it. So, as the Bucks look like me in high school trying to find answers to math problems in calc, the Maroons keep marching. Gao takes the snap, hands it off once again to the running, new into the running back. Breaks off for six yards. Greg Asar on the carry. Junior from Massachusetts. Worcestershire. He's like running sauce? hard. Whoa. <laughs> so as we get to the 11 minute mark here. You know, it's also the combination of the fresh legs of these running backs and this defense that's been out on the field that's most of the game. That's still the starting defense for your Buccaneers. You see Lenz and Josh Shapiro out there. The read option finally going nowhere. Like chapter uh, three in War and Peace, going absolutely nowhere. But it gets the first down, I believe, for him as the chain gang is moving. Do you know what it was called before War and Peace? What was it called before War and Peace? War, what is it good for? Ah. <laughs> Actually, first time I heard that. So I've been told from my friend Jerry and Elaine. First time I uh, heard that song was actually in Sixth Age with Cody Banks. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Classic movie there. Yep. <laughs> Anthony Anderson's first big role. A little confusing there from the Maroons. As Giles in the shotgun. A little motion from the running back. Hands it off to him. Logan, is that another running back we see? It looks like another clean jersey out there for the Maroons. It looks like Luke Rosa, the 5'11 sophomore from Milford, Massachusetts. They must have a running back facility over there in Massachusetts as 21 was also from Massachusetts. Sending guys over to Chicago. I wonder if they got the Boston accents here as we get to the 10 minute Ooh, mark. I wonder if they're wicked time. smart. Smart. <laughs> wonder if their favorite movie is The Departed here as Gao looks to cap off this drive for the touchdown. So the Bucks coming in a 4-3 defense, stick with the man-to-man. -man. The Maroons a little motion there to the running back native of Massachusetts. And he takes it himself. He bursts through a hole to get six yards, uh, seven yards there on that first down. As a Beloit eventual alumni and a current student, I'm just hoping they keep him under 60 here. But that clock just tick, tick, ticks down. Logan, I don't think I've ever been to a football game where this offensive line, this whole team just looked at their coach for the play call, really letting that play clock go down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this time in the fourth quarter is when you start to watch that ref. I'm enjoying or that the, motion. Or the there. clock, anyways. As the Master Chasers native looks to go take it up the middle again, and that's a first down there for number three, Luke Rosa. I don't know how to do a, you know, Little Boston roll. accent. Rosa, Rosa, Raza. As checking into the game is number nine, Jake Lowe. The low and go combo is out there. I apologize there to Wesley Gow. I just like the Gow and Lowe. I just don't like how that sounds. It's not going well. So, Gow leads his men to the line, takes his time watching that play clock as it drops to seven. And it looks like there's going to be a timeout from the Beloit College Buccaneers. Head to this timeout. Just another thanks to everyone who made this possible. Angelo Kelm, shout out to the uh, assistant baseball coach Nick Colby. Colby helped us out. Also, Sammy Crow Hooper, 
Shout out to uh, Logan Patrick Kirk there, directing. We got Zao upstairs on camera. We got Max in here for the second half on camera. Another shout out to freshman Bryce Schofield and TJ Turner for helping me out here today. Logan, it's still a beautiful day here in Lloyd, Wisconsin. Shout out to JT for also making things available and making things happen on this Lloyd Park game day. I appreciate that, Logan. Just trying to you know put something out there that represents the school well. Yes, beautiful day here. Nice to be in the shade. I'm not gonna lie to you. We're very lucky. Nice to be in the shade. I think my leg might have caught some sun in that first half, but I'll live with it. Logan being a very pale individual burns <laughs> very easily. We're very lucky. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have lasted at the soccer game. No. As the girls did win today, two nothing. I was looking on the uh, website. So at least one boy team is getting a win today, and that puts them at three zero and one. Three zero and two. Three zero and two. I did write that article. That's two ties. Two ties it. to start the year and coming off of a three-game heater. Going to that uh, Blit College Roundtable. Check out the articles out there. As it's Gal from the shotgun and Lau right next to him. Hands it off to Lau. Lau is met by a plethora of Buccaneers defenders. This will be on the stop machine. Number 48 for the Buccaneers there. It's Kyle Spring for Cordy. Freshman. Logan, I don't see. I see a lot of six foot here on the roster for both teams. I mean, you got to imagine a lot of five eleven guys. Most people are not honest with their height. Still, the Chicago team has a lot of size to them. This Buccaneers team is that offensive line is just looking impenetrable, looking honestly daunting to that. Yeah. The white defense. Yeah, and and they got a big sideline too. Like we have a record at seven and seven, and they still kind of cower us in numbers. As in the game is twenty one. Greg is Sarah. Is Sarah powers forward. Trying to get the Buccane uh, the Maroons there. Eighth touchdown of the day. Feels like I'm playing Madden franchise mode by myself, killing the computer team as we get to the seven minute mark. Let's see if the Bucks can get fourth and goal. A stop would be huge, and it would be a momentum here, yeah. builder for next week game and for the rest of the season, showing that we're not going to roll over and take it. Little twisted sister reference there. I was there. gonna say we're not gonna take it, huh? As Gal hands off to Sarah. Sarah's met by a bunch of Buccaneers, and he's held up. So we get the fourth and goal. Yeah, Let's we got some good penetration on that play. We're gonna need some momentum here, Logan, as this might be the oh biggest yeah. play of the game. Here we go. For our self-esteem, for our egos. Oh wait, are we seeing a field goal? Are you gonna kick it? And if for a fan of special teams, it's your first field goal of the game. Last week. Cornell did kick a field goal against the start of the game. Adam Mitchell, a native of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, kicked the field goal for the Cornell Rams. So I'm a very big fan of special teams. Yep. Repping the Capital Conference. That Bigfoot and Lake Mills are in. Set to hold for the Maroons. Looks like Coleman Smith, the wide receiver, that is the most important part of the kick, is the hold. The hold is good. Laces out Dan, and it's through. As they're into the 50s, that is now 52 nothing. Maroons. So a great possession there for the Chicago Maroons. Look to see if the Buccaneers can have any type of momentum like that. As I did see a quarterback warming up on the sideline for the Buccaneers. We'll see if they keep a safe ran or they go to a different squad member. Buccaneers Logan seem to be putting a lot of pressure on themselves. You can they feel tight, they don't feel, you know, they feel like they're tin man at the beginning of the Wizard of Oz. They're not oiled up, they're sitting there. They need a little yeah. juice, something to relax, something to get them going. Yeah, and I'm not sure how you find that this late in the game. Mm -hmm. But I think that's that kind of stuff starts early, you know. Even in even in like warm ups, how early do you get out? How dialed in are you even just doing cardinal passing and stuff like that? They only allowed 14 points in the first quarter. But, Logan, dare I say this, if we win this game, I'll dance a jig. <laughs> but I don't know what I'll do if we win, if the Bucks win. A little last Boy Scout reference there for Jimmy Dix there and Joe Hallen back as looks like A.J. Fitzpatrick and Gavin Thorpe are still back there to return. Goodman having a lot of day, a big day kicking is once again going to kick. 
as Thorpe set to return to Patrick on the block. Fitzpatrick makes the block. Thorpe gets to the 20, and he gets a big hit there from number 27 for the Maroons. Henry Partridge. Partridge in a fair tree as a 6'3 freshman made a hit. 6'3, how many, how many LBs? LBs, you want to know there, Logan? I'm going to hit you with the 205. The Maroons really popping out a big squad there. That is a freshman, and we spoke about it earlier. There are other safeties. Brandon Junker being 6'4, 198. Just size galore everywhere. Those boys, good football athletes. So with the six-minute mark, it looks like I have a new quarterback in the game. Doesn't seem to be Alex Alvarez just a second on the depth chart. It seems to be number six on the team, Giovanni Griffin, the freshman from Elgin, Illinois, as a handoff to 28 on the play, 28 being Drake Marquez, a freshman from Northbrook, Illinois, went to Glenbrook High School. Going nowhere as well. So it looks like the bench is in for the Bucks. As a couple of fans set to exit the stadium, but our late faithful, our student section, still popping, still hype as it is. Still over at least 100 students over there. Nice to see on this Saturday afternoon. Yeah. I mean, what else are you going to do? Do some homework today? No. I, you know I love some homework. <laughs> I meant yes, do I? It does look like Alex, uh, wait, if I remember correctly, it looks like Alex Alvarez is at quarterback now. As he throws a pick, which will be six for number 98 for the Maroons. Number 98 being Chris Murphy, the senior from Naples, Florida. Had it thrown right to him as Alvarez yep. is 0 for 1 with a pick on the day. Yeah, that's going to hurt the QBR. That, that, do you even get a rating on that? Is that a negative rating then? I don't know. But that's tough. That is that's inserted in the game. See. You look right. You got the pressure coming on you. And it makes the game 58. All kind I want is a Beloit faithful to keep it under 60. So we'll see with the rest of this game. Kind of a long delivery for Alvarez there on that, on that pass. Alvarez looking like Zach Wilson on that throw. As now there's a new kicker inserted into the game. The kicker being number 87, Jack Ryder. Is that 87 or 37 there, Logan? Maybe that's an 8. I don't see a 30. It looks like 37 in Colleen Cooper, the corner, the freshman from or Michigan. 97. Logan. 97. 97's got the kickoff. Ah, I got excited. Now. I got excited for a second there. As it looks like it's Michael Gomez, the sophomore from Searsville, New Jersey. But going back to, where was it, right here? Number 37, Kalen Cooper. Corner of the freshman, Birmingham, Michigan, went to Detroit Country Day. Trivia, fun fact of the day. Do you know who went to Detroit Country Day? Can I get a hint? Basketball player. Can Woody Durham's most hint? famous call. Who? Woody Durham's most famous call. I don't know Woody Durham. He Chris calls Weber. the timeout. He Chris calls. Chris Weber. It is indeed Chris Weber of the Fab Five, a Detroit Country Day alum. I was going to guess one of the Fab Five, actually, or a Piston player. Piston player? Eh, yeah, I guess so. Same so brother from Michigan. It looks like the sophomore from New Jersey is going to get another chance to kick as Goodman's been kicking all day. Gomez, the kick. It's long, and it looks like we have a new returner back there. Is that 83, it looks 83. like. 83. He's Down the seam. late flag there, Logan. Logan, what would you see in that play? What flag would that be? That's got him blocking the back. Bree Card, injured earlier in the game, made a catch earlier in the game. You never know what Brady's got in his cars as the Beloit will look to take over from their 25. But we got a flag, blocking the back. Logan, we spoke earlier on the broadcast, or today before going through our pregame interview, spoke about the eye shy bump. Is there, you think there's anything to do with Beloit being down 59 with you being in the booth today? Yes. Yes, I'll even tell you a story. My brother, who's at Whitewater, UW Whitewater, mm -hmm. he was he was there. He was there for four years, obviously. And his freshman year, he didn't he didn't help manage football. They make a deep run in the playoffs, national semis or whatever. He managed. He manages. They lose two games in the regular season. He doesn't manage the next year. They go to the Stag Bowl. That's just some eye side luck for you. As Giovanni Griffin looks to hand it off to the running back. We'll get you a number on that in a second. Important uh, 
Running back seems to be 26. 26 on the carry was George Stevenson, the sophomore from Mundelin, Illinois. He's coming in at 5'8", 189. All right, how about now? As we get <laughs> pumped up here for Giovanni Griffin coming in for Alex Alvarez. Griffin looking quite solid. Honestly, reminds me of Dak Prescott here in this pocket. Yeah, we'll see what what's different. Takes a snap. Oh, a little juke. Oh, ooh, a little spin move. Gets it to about the 35. Shifty. Shifty, Shifty indeed. So, as the clock ticks down, four minutes left here in this game, we thank you for tuning in. And, Logan, my recap will be simple. You Chicago, you Chicago, you Chicago. You name any player on that team, on that starting offense, they scored a touchdown. Kudos out to Matt Craiglia having two touchdowns on the day. Quarterback, Philip Martini was like James Bond, shaking that stir as he was stirring that pot all day for that offense. So MJ Smith-Duke enters the game for the Buccaneers again as Griffin in the shotgun, one receiver out left, two out right. Fumbles it, picks it up, and fumbles it again. And I think the Maroons recovered. That is That's indeed a, a double fumble. That is a tough break. Not to be confused with the double doink. Or the butt fumble. Or the butt fumble. Logan, I don't think anything could be worse here for the Buccaneers, but at the end of the day, they're still making progress to being a better team. They're super young. They still go to a great school. Some may even call it the Yale of the Midwest. They are getting a great education. A great education, indeed. Do not indeed. take that away from these guys. And it still is a great day to be a Beloiter. Great day. Soccer got a victory. Soccer did get a win. And second in the game is Teddy Golden, the quarterback, the freshman from New Jersey. A lot of New Jersey kids on this roster. Teddy making a look an impact here. Teddy hands it off. Running back looks like 22. 22 is breaking the outside. He might score. Running back on the carry was Matthew Nagler, the 5'6", 160 senior from Mount Kisco, New York. Might have been their seventh running back on the day there, Logan. Yeah, I would be interested to see these carry stats. Looks like we have an injured player. He seems not to be too shaken up. Just something in one of his legs, like a sprained ankle or a cramp. Let's hope. About 3.15 left here. As you, Chicago looks to be one of the more tougher opponents that Beloit will face this year. Yes, I think they will be the toughest boys to face in this year. I, I did a quick glance at the rankings of all of Division Three, and you, Chicago, is the highest at 49. I don't remember the exact numbers of everyone else, but they were not as high as 49. This is shaping up to be a big game here in two weeks on homecoming. We play Grinnell. As we talked about before, but that could be the first win that we see this year as next week we have another tough opponent on the road. I believe next week we have a bye. Is a bye next week? I believe so. Let's say bye bye to my announcement job after yeah. botching that one. <laughs> I believe you are correct, but it's just great to be out here after COVID. And it's a long season here, it's 11 weeks. And I do believe you are right with the bye. A bye it's is a tough opponent as well, though, because it's. You know, you're 0-2. It can get you. It can get you. And the <laughs> players start losing interest. And just to see how you really feel, Maybe. if you're really invested. Yeah. You know. So you can quote me on that. A bye is our toughest opponent this year. It's our toughest for our mental health and our physical health to see where we're at. So come back out. Touchdown, Teddy Golden looks to make his mark as the freshman getting his first action. Matthew Nagler, the running back, a 5'6 senior, looking to get his first touchdown of the day. Kind of like Oprah today, Logan. You get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. As they're waiting for the officials to start the clock. The clock is started. Looks like we're waiting for the All clock waiting to for get way down. down. A lot of chatter on the field. They're loving their team. The snap, Golden hands it off to the running back. Nagler, Nagler looking for a hole. 
scampered for about three yards there. Oh, we got some nice looks extracurriculars like going on. Looks like 43's checking in the game. I'm hoping he's coming in at running back as Nago takes off. 43 is also running back, and Frankie Lonergan, Frankie the freshman. There is a Frankie chant going on right now. Another Massachusetts player. I'm cheering for Beloit to stop him, but if anybody does score, I want it to be Frankie here. As a 5'6", 180 from Boston. They could remake the whole Departed movie with how many Boston guys they got. They got a lot of Massachusetts fellas. I think Frankie would play the part as Leo as he is clearly charismatic to this team. Golden, out of shotgun, hands it off to Frankie. Frankie's got a hole. He's breaking on the outside, and Frankie Lonergan scores. The freshman from Massachusetts breaks the 60 bomb. And they're excited here at uh, Beloit. The Frankie chants aren't breaking out again, but Frankie is clearly excited. Frankie's a fan favorite, it looks like, for this East Chicago team. Kudos to him. He almost got knocked down over there by 25, Stephen Arellano. The birthday oh, boy greets him as he exits the field. Was it the birthday? Oh, Kyle James. Yeah, 25. Uh, they, they have two 25s. <laughs> <laughs> They're just East Chicago trying to mess with us announcers. As the kick is up, and it's like, good, man, as we go <laughs> to 65. 66, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Michael Gomez, two for two on the day. I believe uh, the other kicker there, uh, Will Goodman. I think he was, it was 66. Seven for seven on the day. As we're at that two minute warning at Miami Heat, Dos Munotos left, as I botched that completely. I'm a little rusty on my Spanish. Golden, I wonder no idea. you could take a Spanish class here at Beloit as they do offer it, being a great school in general, having multiple languages to learn, having multiple courses to take. This itself is a course, as my prediction of Alabama and Florida is not looking so hot as Alabama is up 21-3. to Notre Dame still only up 10-3 to on Purdue. Iowa, close game with the Kent State Flashes, only up 9-7. to Ohio State tied with Tulsa early. Go Tulsa. Clemson playing Georgia Tech up 7 nothing. Number 20, Arkansas, playing Georgian Southern, up 14-0. And Texas A&M took a victory today over New Mexico, 34-0. And Cincinnati was down two scores early, lost Indiana. Coastal Carolina escaped Buffalo with a three-point win. They have that cool field. Yeah, As do. Gonzalez on the kick, it's still Fitzpatrick back there. Fitzpatrick takes it. Fitzpatrick is looking to break the outside, makes a cutoff field, breaks a block. And they're kind of throwing him around there like a rag doll there as he goes down to the 25. So we'll see which quarterback comes out of here for this Beloit Buccaneers offense. As it looks like Jacob Schaefer's day is done. Alvarez's day might be done after uh, one pick six. Looks like it's um, Griffin. Six back in there, yeah. Giovanni Griffin, the freshman, 5'11", coming in at 200 pounds. He's a big quarterback. I do like the Dak. Let's see if he gets that Dak hip movement in there. That is one of a kind. In the backfield is Drake Marquez. As a freshman, 86 is still out there, and Isaac Wellman played a great game today. Read option, hands it off to Marquez. Marquez tries to juke right, but kind of tripped up there by his own lineman as the clock ticks down to a minute and 30. Logan, I don't call this a failure. We lost two years, 66-14. This year we lose 66-0. I just see it as more building, more character building. I yeah. think the Chicago team is better than they were two years ago. I remember two years ago, they were all right, but they weren't this great. Yeah. I mean, at some point, um, the building's going to have to take form. We'll see it in, you know, we have the bye week going into Grinnell. As we talked about, it's tough as opponent, but it also could be your greatest strength to plan for that 223rd ranked Grinnell team. As Marquez takes up the middle again on a shotgun, but is stuffed. Stopped at the 30-yard line. But well, you see a pancake block there for the Beloit Buccaneers as it looks like 67. Cooper Slatter, the freshman from Barrington, Illinois, had a pancake there. One of my least favorite things is being one of the smaller guys on those football fields. And then a big lineman would hop on top of you and lay there. It's yeah. It's a good block there. It's good to see him still fighting. Yeah, yeah, right to the very end here down the last 30 seconds. So Griffin takes 
center as we have 20 seconds left in this game. Griffin misses the handoff, takes it himself. Breaks an ankle. And fumbles it again. Land fumble. Sound like the Casco and apology there, Logan. <laughs> as the clock ticks five, four, three, two, one. That wraps up our game, 66 to nothing. Logan, do you have any final thoughts? Let's uh, look forward to Grinnell in two weeks, right back here. Matt Lazlo will be back on the call. I just want to thank everyone for making it possible. Shout out TJ Trini, Jabari Schofield being on camera today. Max for being on camera. Logan Patrick Kirk for directing. Jonathan Kelly for putting this up on Beloit TV. Angela Kelm for being so nice. Zao, thank Logan for being here.